Can you hear me in your headphones? I can. Okay. Now this this one here is your volume just for your head headphones. So you can adjust this to so go up So I can up turn down. down the sound of you in my head? It's 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 both of us. Oh, both of us. So I'm gonna hear my oh, I can hear myself talking. Yeah. This is gonna suck. Yeah. Well, you don't have you don't even need you don't, don't even lie. need the you can unplug it. Oh. You can turn it all the way down if you want. All right. All right. If I leave it like that. Yeah. My, my uh. My I need outside you. voice. I can hear over this voice. Well, it's gonna mess with you even worse. I need you like much closer. Yeah. No. I know. One okay. thing at a time. One thing at a time. Because <laughs> then it'll be like. Yeah. So one thing at a time. Yeah. No. That's that's perfect right there. Yeah. You just let me know what you need me to do and. I'm going to move and not slouch like a fucking Yeah, animal. well, yeah, and if you move, you can move it with you. You know what I mean? Like, I get, like, I get all weird. I'll, like, lean back and I'll bring it yeah, with me. Well, and you're, I'm you're, like, you're used oh, to this shit. I'm you know, not. I'm, I'm not. not this is only episode six. This is episode uh, none for me. episode two for you because you did josh's but i didn't have a, I had a microphone on me oh oh was it one of the youtube ones oh it yeah, was a yeah, youtube yeah. one he filmed it right there i sat there i had a microphone in my shirt oh yeah okay this wasn't this wasn't like the Not, revival motoring no, podcast it was YouTube. his new youtube interview yeah. series yes, oh okay 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 yes. so yeah so that's though i might end up on the podcast yeah uh, about the uh um you should about the uh kind of my opinion on electric vehicles which is amazing because him chuck and Corey are always talking about electric vehicles it kind of drives me a bit crazy because it's only the positive side of it and never the never the negative uh, you should be the devil's advocate in that like conversation yeah that, that's what i want you know i want to do because like you can find plenty of information that's pro evs and you can find plenty of information that's not evs and like i personally think electric vehicles are going to bring Death and destruction. Yeah, in a sense. <laughs> yeah. You want people. Ma- there's no plumbing systems on. There's no exhaust. There's no plumbing. System, no, no, everything's electric on electric cars. So you now you have all these industries that provided brake lines, fittings, hydraulics, all this stuff to these vehicles that won't exist, won't be in need for them anymore. A bunch of people are going to be out of jobs. A bunch of stuff's not going to be made anymore. And then the biggest thing with it all is mining for lithium, which is on phones and batteries, all this other stuff. Right, like, right, right. Yeah. It is terrible. Absolutely. Like, you have oil rigs, right? Oil rigs, barring an oil spill, has a very, very small footprint. Uh, whereas mining for lithium, it's like holes the size of cities that nothing can be done. They're just destroying. It just destroys everything. It destroys wildlife, all the shit. And on top of it, the mining is performed by diesel equipment. Oh, yeah. that's That was always the funniest uh, argument when, when the Priuses first came out and, and you know, all these like random people were driving Priuses, yeah. but like preaching the, the the extreme end of the spectrum about the Priuses, and it's like you do know like like the batteries are transported on like diesel powered like boats, and I don't I'm not an expert on all this stuff, but that there were like carbon footprint machines that were building these cars. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Formula E. Yeah, right? yeah they yeah, can't yeah. transport the cars and the batteries on the same. That's right. Uh, boats or uh, planes. Right. Okay, so now that's twice the amount of fuel, right? Yeah. Right? It's right. funny. Yeah, it's funny how that works. It's so dumb. And then yeah. from a whole other standpoint, I understand electric cars, they make a certain sound. I got that. But you revving like a, you know, you know, a blown like small block or whatever, you're revving something like that versus you speeding away in an EV the small block's going to get your blood like really pumping, like from an uh, enthusiast yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, really going to get your that. adrenaline like going that like you want to like, like, I've, you know, how many times you're at shows, wherever on the street. And all of a sudden you're like, here, you hear a car and you're like, we've oh. got that pumping in our veins. You know, and you like, you hear it and you're like, oh, and you want to see it. You know, like EV, like, eh, all right, it sounds cool, but I'm not like <laughs> jumping for it. Like I understand they sound, yeah, they have their own sound, but like, it's not, it's not the same. No, it's not. It's, the same. it's not. And we have biased outlooks on well that that's too, biased but like we're, my, we're car guys yeah my non-biased section of that is the the detriment to the planet and everything exactly. that's my like non-biased side of it, but the that's my bias side of it yeah. also that does then affect my industry because if there are less demand for these materials and products that means it's going to be my costs have to go up because it's going to be less material hard for me to get stuff like it's going to go up like yeah. what am i going to do like you know i have to then just try to beat out all these other assholes so I can stay in business. Like it sucks. <laughs> yeah. You'll it's, have, you have a whole bunch of Teslas and uh, 
electric cars in here on one of the um never on one of the uh <laughs> i had those like ask me a question maybe i'll answer um someone something about uh doing something to his his uh model three and i was like I, I don't I think I typed but I never like responded I never went through with it but I was like yeah. oh, sorry wrong number like oh, no. I'm not I'm not doing that like I don't yeah I yeah. don't I well don't. I mean I, I admire the the passionate outlook you know what I mean because not a lot of people I mean because I'm kind of like whatever I I definitely have I definitely have gasoline and oil pumping through my veins just because my dad was into muscle cars and that that's like I don't have I don't look at an electric car and I'm like I hate that thing but I don't have any interest in owning one you know, uh, I'm like, I don't like those things. They are yeah. really ugly. I don't want to own one ever, but like, I understand the idea of like, I understand them in like a city aspect. Like, all right, you have these exactly. cars, go short distance. I understand yes. that. It's but transportation and that's it. Yeah. I understand that. But at the same time, at the same time, this, this is such a huge subject. At the same time, the emissions from like other, like a, you know, gasoline vehicle, so it's hard to, or it's, hard, it's not hard to describe, but like you have a gasoline car, right? You have a tractor from 50 years ago. It still runs today, right? Oh, absolutely. All right, no problem. But now today you have cars in the last like decade, decade with all these emission stuff on it, which from the factory, they're safe, they're like good emissions, like ratings and for the environment. But from we know, from what we know from modifying cars and everything, those systems deteriorate over time and they, they'll add more, like they cycle crankcase vent, like crankcase gases back into the motor and you end up with like build up on your intake manifold or your runners or stuff, things like that. So now your car that was efficient, was efficient when it left the showroom is right. not anywhere near as efficient as it once were. Whereas cars that like attracted cars that didn't have the emissions or this type of regulations or whatever, the style that they are, the day they left the factory, they're still within the same range decades later. And like basically the best simple example of this is a catch can. Why not install a catch can on a vehicle versus circulating it back in where like you have people change your oil just, and the dealer does, almost everybody has a car at the dealer and they have the dealer service it. Just add that onto the list of change the oil, drain the catch can, done. And that simple thing would stop those contaminants from going into the motor where they're supposedly being burnt off and they're not. And then like diesel trucks now, you have like the DEF and all this other stuff. And to now to comp down to, and they're not as fuel efficient as they once were. And now to combat that, they're putting 10 speed transmission, automatic transmissions on them and doing with all the automatics because they have to upgrade the auto transmissions to upgrade to automatic transmissions to keep the, the RPMs down to limit the emissions because of the equipment they put on it to make them cleaner. Yeah. Whereas you, I have a, my comments has 300,000 miles on it. It turns on like, it drives every time, yeah. every time. And it's like, it's so, it's so, uh, it's ridiculous. Like you just have to I, look at like, it's just other things like, and, and then the big thing, I this topic goes on fucking forever. The big <laughs> thing with this, cause like they mentioned on revival about cruise ships, right? Yeah. Cruise ships. Yeah. You don't, you technically don't need cruise ships, but you don't need lots of things. But on that level, factories, there are a substantial amount of factories that are still, that are, operating today under old like guidelines under old equipment that have terrible emissions because nothing's ever been upgraded nothing's ever been changed on them you know they're still working on stuff that was creating the issue that we have today and like there's other countries that they've addressed this and their greenhouse gas emissions and things like that have decreased because a factory is going to put out so much more than a you know a handful you know not you know a million vehicles or whatever you know, so there's these other things that need to be addressed that have a much larger imp like my car, your car, you're not dumping chemicals into the water. Right. Right. Waste chemicals that you can't get rid of, but factories are right because not every factory, but you know, that's something that has been done in the past. It's been done. Like, people have been oh, absolutely. Su su sued, fined, arrested. It's been done. So like, yeah. And you're going to tell me that that's not worse than having the cars. So now if we correct that or focus on that, and then focus on uh, changing the uh, emission systems on cars to be more efficient, like the catch can idea and stuff like that. Like one more, you know, there's a way to make it a little more maintenance. And then also in doing that, you end up with more work for people too, because now you're not only draining the oil, you're not changing the oil, you're draining the catch can. So like somebody else has more work, like it right. kind of helps 
everybody I feel granted there's I'm sure there's other sides of that but that's oh, like absolutely but yeah. like that's like my view that I I feel my view is not the common one so like that's the well that's an interesting yeah. yeah that's an interesting take because I've just kind of I haven't followed anything like really every now and then I'll, I'll see something going on with Tesla or something like that but I try I not to because it makes me really angry I, I know I can tell yeah <laughs> yeah this is crazy well we're rolling okay so we've got all that down I figured the thing I kind of feeling and that and so the the way because I know Josh was recently in here Josh Garcia was recently in here and you did one of his YouTube uh yes. like little interview things and those are edited in post this one's gonna be we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna we're gonna hang out and chat for a little bit I'm looking forward but like to I it. said we can dude I'm okay with sitting here and talking about music whatever but I do know that a lot of people that are listening do want you to regurgitate a little bit what you probably just told Josh is like that's fine have you always have you always been in to cars maybe not as passionately as you are now no. you know but no, no didn't really kind of grow up always don't know no. so my my family is like not cars like grew up uh in construction doing my family was a plumbing business so that's how I grew up I grew up in plumbing my grandfather he did own a body shop at one point in time yeah but it was before you know before I was born like way you know decades ago and stuff like that so like I only learned about him owning a body shop a little bit after me getting into cars but uh um was that on Long Island yeah every, Long Island? I was on Long, like, the whole time well yeah I've been on his shop was in Brooklyn when oh, okay. he did because my grandfather yeah. my my parent like my grandfather he, he lived in Brooklyn but you grew up on Long Island I grew up forever yep. so, yeah I was on Long yep. Island forever so but like uh I mentioned this on on Josh's on the revivals but like um I wasn't really into cars. It never really interested me. And then uh, Fast and the Furious came out. It was a cool movie. Yeah. So that movie, I'm, in that, there's a Jetta. Not that specific Jetta, but like I like the profile of, and that's how I got into Volkswagens. I like cool. the profile of that vehicle. Like a Mark III to me is like a classic like Volkswagen. Like that is a car. Like that's what you want a car to look like. So there's that. But also what really just kind of pushed me into it was my best friend at the time had a 74 blazer like slam two-door built motor four-speed manual five-speed manual he took me for a ride in it and it was like no interior like super raw and i was like this is ridiculous i need to do i need a manual vehicle i need to do these things yeah and then manual vehicle i bought a two liter jetta like aba like stock that didn't really have that same experience no when you drove it. no but i did <laughs> learn how to drive so i didn't was this was this around sixteen? Right around the time you were getting your no. license? Okay. This is around seventeen or so. Okay. I didn't get my permit until six months before my seventeenth birthday. So most okay. people are like sixteen or fifteen, right. they get their learner's permit. Right. I waited like I'm like I have no interest in driving really yep. at all. And um I got my license at seventeen. I had a old cutlass uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais and I used to drive at the skate spots and you know, a little two door red interior just throw stuff in it and uh go to skate spots because that was yep. awesome I don't, I don't have to ride my bike to skate spots anymore I could just go so like me and my one friend Danny we used to go to skate spots together me and him hung out like all the time every day and then I would make our other group of friends pay gas right because they used to go skate and not invite they wouldn't always tell me and Danny where they were going so I'm like all right well if you're gonna keep that up if you want me to drive you somewhere you're paying yeah. And like, well, I remember one day they were like, oh, you're going to give us a ride to so-and-so's house. I'm like, no. And then they're like, yeah. I'm like, no, no, I'm not picking you up. And then like we went to that person's house and like an hour later they show up. They're like, you never picked us up. I'm like, I know. I told you I wasn't picking you up. So I'm not picking you up. But so I had that. And then sometime around there. Uh, or So then my time went a little off. 16, you had the no, so So 17, 17 is when I had the Oldsmobile. Okay. In that time frame is when I went for a ride in my friend's truck. You're right. And then after that was when Fast and the Furious came out around there, or at least I'd seen it. So the Jetta, like the profile of it. Yeah, when was that? It was like 2000? Literally no idea. I graduated high school in 03. So, so did my, I. Oh, yeah, okay. Same, same, yeah, so we're same age. Yeah, yeah. So 01, 02, 03 were my high school years. Right. And yeah, it was in those years that it, it was came at out. the end of that, though, because I didn't, it definitely came out after I had a driver's license. Okay. So 02, 03 ish. Something like, yeah. yeah. So then French truck. Fast and the Furious, decided I want a Volkswagen, I want to buy a Jetta, I've seen Jetta, I like Jetta. That's so cool that Fast and the Furious, out of all the movies or, or documentation or like photos, that Fast and Furious would have gotten you into Volkswagens. But you get that, I'd actually admit that. 
Yeah, but that's awesome. Yeah. Cause, cause I, I was just as, just as impressionable with the Fast and Furious when I watched it too. And to be honest, now my dad, not the bunny trail this, but my dad raced the Mark 1 GTI oval track when I was a kid. So I, See, that was cool. kind of in my blood. But Fast and the Furious, I think when I was in high school and I saw that Mark 3, I almost had like that. Oh, it's a little too ricey for me. It was the Veilside RX-7 where I was like, See, oh, I didn't, that's it. I wasn't me. into any of the other cars in that film. But it's cool that it's just cool the, that I saw the Jetta. I'm like, I want the Jetta. That's, I want a Jetta. Yeah. And that's what I think is so cool because I had already kind of gotten into Volkswagen. So when I saw the way they portrayed a Volkswagen in Fast and Furious, I was almost like, nah, I don't know. But you saw it and you're like, no, 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 this is. Because the profile was like perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah which you know, is like, yeah. That's what I wanted. Like, you know, I had the kit on stuff like that, but yeah. still you got the outside profile. Right. And then, so I decided I wanted to buy a Jetta. I was going to buy a five-speed two-liter because I wasn't going to be able to support a VR. Right. And I learned how to drive manual on one of my friends in high school. She had a Hyundai Accent, like this little... Oh, know, my bought, goodness she gracious. She bought the car brand new. I think... I could be wrong on for this. For $5,000. For $6,000. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. I was Brand just, new from the even, dealer. Dude, I didn't even know you were going to talk about MSRP. I just said that because yeah. those cars always seemed like they were $4,000 cars. <laughs> so she paid like $6,000 for it. It was brand new. And like oh, she was perfect. the type of girl to like get a car like that where it was like, okay, this is what I can afford. It's new. I don't have to worry about it. I'm going right. to buy it. I'm going to be, she was very, very, um, very smart. But she's like, oh, it's manual. You want to let it drive stick? Yes, I do. So we drove around a parking lot for like a few hours. I yeah. drove stick and then I bought a manual car and there was no in the middle. Like I bought my car. I'm like, okay, I got to figure out how to drive this thing now. Right. And I, I drove it. I went out at night because, uh, less traffic and I could see when the lights were changing. So like, all right, that light's going to turn red. I'm going to turn green, like put it in gear. Let me start to like get this going. And then yeah, you know, after a little out. bit, you figure it out. Right. Um, and then, uh, um, I like modified that car a bit. Like I did, I did some like ricey stuff to it. Yeah. And, well, uh, what was that though? No, let's, let's hear. No. no, you don't want to talk about what you did to that car? It was car? pretty bad. This was what? Oh, four at this point. No, no. Oh, three. This was, had, this was, this was, so I graduated in oh three. So this right. was, I got it basically at the end of, of graduating high school. Cause like I got money from graduating high school yep. and uh, yeah, I didn't. Ha so you had the Mark three in your senior year of high school, probably. I don't, I don't remember if I got that. It was cold out when I got it. Maybe but, I had it. Maybe I did have it for like the tail end of my high school year. I probably did have it for the tail end of my high school year, but I don't think I did. I think I'm a, I don't know, man. It's all but like, what, what'd you start with when you modified it? Exhaust probably. But a I bought fart can on the back of that thing. I don't remember. I either <laughs> bought like a pace setter exhaust off eBay and I put it on the, I put it on the car in the garage of my grandfather. Yep. So like that car and my following Mark three, I did a lot of work on it with my grandfather, which is cool. Like, you know how that goes. Like right. I just, you and your dad, me and my grandfather, I used yep. to work on it with him all the time. And I, I love everything about those times, but I did that, did the exhaust. I brought it somewhere to have lowering springs put on it. Like yep. not, didn't know, like no joke. <laughs> like I brought it somewhere and like, Oh, I've can, can, can you, you can lower this. All right. So this I buy, the, I buy I the springs in this magazine right here. Like right. this is all right, cool. And then I'm going to wait while you install them. All right. And then they like bring it out and you're like, wow, it's not low at all. Cause it's springs. Right. And they go like two inches. <laughs> no, not even. Not no, even. We're talking like, um, what are the other time? Like 40 millimeters, like, you know, like right. 30 millimeters. And then like, oh my God. So I, I love, I did that. And I did some other stuff that was not so great. I'm not. We've all been there. Yeah, but I'm not. It's, <laughs> it's bad for me. It's bad for business. It is bad for business. But then. Um, so you had two Mark threes in a row? In a row. So yeah. this is a black Mark three GL base model, everything. Right. I was trying to buy another car. I wanted to sell this car. I wanted to buy a VR. I really wanted like a GLX, have all the options. You know, it's a VR. And that would have more of that wow factor that your buddy's Blazer did. Yeah, it's a VR, man. Yeah, VR exactly. Is like, VR yeah, is yeah. probably like my, I know it's not the best, but VR is like my favorite motor. I'd have to agree so, with, with yeah, the power to weight when you put it in a smaller car yeah. and it's sound. It's I just love VRs. They're just like, car. you know, not 3.6s. Those don't, those don't count. They don't share the same oil pan. Don't count. Okay. So. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Not a VR. Not, yeah. In my eyes, not a real VR, but I wanted one. Couldn't find any or whatever. This th and then it was so funny because like I was working and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put some money into this two liter. I'm going to put a header on and I'm going to fix it up because it ne needs some work. I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to yep. do this. That's what I'm going to do. And the next day I'm on a job site. One of the guys comes in from one of the carpenters comes in from lunch. He mentions how his friend wants to sell his VR Jetta, 
blah, blah, works at the deli, like in the town I was working. And I'm like, all right, cool, dad. I'll see you later. I'm going to run meet this kid real quick. Like, no joke. Just left the job site, <laughs> went, left the job site, went, saw this kid. I'm like, hey, you have a Jennifer Stella? He's like, yeah, I do. I'm like, all right, cool. Worked out the deal, like meet him and everything. I had him bring it to my mechanic and my mechanic checked it out. And then I bought it. And I had two Jettas for a while because I kept that one off the road for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did some, I had to do like an exhaust work to it. Um, where at this point, I actually think this is what prompted me and my brother buying a MIG welder was repairing this exhaust. My brother went to BOCES. My younger brother went to BOCES for welding. So he's the one that like was the welder and like showed me how to weld. And that's, you know, cool. this is, you know, 2000, this is around 2000, end of 2003, 2004 is now yep. at this point of this conversation, I think. And, um, but I'm pretty confident we bought our first MIG welder to fix the exhaust. This dude had like this uh, dual DTM, like tipped on this Jetta, like cut the, oh my God, it was bad. <laughs> this one, was, the VR one? Yeah, it was yeah. bad. So like uh, cut that off, just did two straight pipes, you know, how the stock exhaust would be. And then I got like lowering springs. I got some other stuff. Um, I had that car for a few years. I did like Euro bump, like Vento rear bumper, Euro cool. front bumper. So you're kind of coming into that, more that of like one, a refined That one was coming into style. doing the Euro stuff. Right. Um, Euro stuff, coilovers, like Recaros, like kind of getting into the, um Now, were you on Vortex at this point? Were you kind of using yeah. that as like, a, as like a... Yeah, that was, those are Vortex days. Okay. 100% Vortex here. days. Yeah, because it, it, it sounds like they would have been because if you were touching like on Recaro interior and kind of doing things that like enthusiasts were already kind yeah, of Yeah, no, doing. that was definitely... that. Okay, that was Vortex days. Okay. Yeah of if you had a mark three you were cool you had a mark two you were cool if you had a mark four you were a loser because all you talked about was your <laughs> clear side markers <laughs> yeah that was the thing like no and that was the, always the joke no 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 one care about your mark four and your clear side markers no one likes them go away and <laughs> that I'm was a, the beginning of like and i'm a mark four unquote. kid for life so mark, like yeah now you are yeah yeah that's uh, funny because that demographic changed so like it did. Um, and yeah, i love i love mark fours like i love like, I love the style of them, but really what got me into them was that they offered the 24 valve with the six speed manual, um, the 2.8, not the R. Cause at the time the R wasn't, no, the R was out during me having this like mentality, but I liked the 2.8. Um, well moving from, moving from that VR Mark three, how, so, how long, how much time went by before you owned a Mark four? I, I had the Mark three for a few years. Yeah. Um, this stuff's always like kind of fuzzy. Cause like, I remember like doing like one of the PBW like features. I had like write some stuff, you know. I remember like writing out a whole thing and then like I submitted it and a little later I'm like, I, oh, I one of the, um, one of the, like the writers, but no, are... like, no, what thinking way ahead when I had the Mark fours in PBW. Oh, okay. I okay, remember okay. coming back through some of the stuff and I wrote the whole thing. I sent it in. And I'm like, I missed a whole year of like time in there. So my time frame for all the stuff is very off, oh. but I definitely had the Mark three Jetta. I had it. All right. So I had it from like 2003, 2004 to had to be like 2006 or 2007 around there. Like I said, lowered Euro bumpers, smoked E codes. Like it had some crappier mods on it originally. And then I swapped some stuff out and was able to source like bumpers and stuff. And uh, I really liked it. I had some custom, I did some, I built an exhaust for like, that was one of the first cars I built an exhaust for. And learned um, to weld a little bit with your brother yeah, doing that. Yeah. And like that, yeah. actually, on that car, because I didn't have pneumatic tools, I learned, I was, I became like uh, learning how to make tools to make things work. For instance, to hold the crank pulley to lock the crank pulley in place. I made like this wrench, I cut a socket, put like this bar in it, it would hit the control arm. So you could That'd hold it. Oh, and then I made like a, a long T wrench that would go through my wheel, <laughs> through the spoke of the wheel and hit the bolt. So I can outside the car, turn it and break this bolt loose. It was, it was terrible. Like that one in particular was harder than most. Like, yeah, but just, you were figuring it out at that point. Right. Yeah. Um, so like I, I make a lot of like what I do today and now, and since then I make all sorts of custom tools for like the jobs I do. And like, if I build you a car, do a turbo setup, do whatever for you. And I have to make some custom tool for your application. I make the tool, get the job done. And then when you pick your car up, you get the tool with your car because it doesn't, I might need right. it in the future, but I'll make it again in the future, but yeah. you might need it and you own it. So like that goes with the car, but I've always made like custom tools and like doing the, um, when I start removing like the ABS in the Mark four, I make a tool to get the pedal apart, all this stuff. But but that's kind of where it started was out of necessity oh, to work 100%, on your own car. Oh, 100%. 100%. Right, right. And uh, this is all like in my parents' driveway. Yep. We had a little garage. I had like a little section of like my toolbox and like a shelf. I can keep some of my stuff on, but like how to put it away every time we were done, me and my brother. Yep. And then my brother had a Mark III Jetta as well, a, a white two liter. Um, 
And, uh, but everything was outside. Everything was in the driveway, like super, like we couldn't, no joke, you couldn't fit a car in the garage. Like nothing fit in the garage. Everything's outside. So it was yep. like snowing or raining, like you either weren't out or you put like the canopy up and tarps over it and stuff. Yep. But so at Mark III, I did like that stuff on, that's where I really got into like the, the Euro, um, like the Euro styling aspect of it. And then one like winter, I was driving back from Binghamton. I'm in the car and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sell it. Like I had done like cams and stuff in it and I had some, had had somebody work on it at the time. And after I had worked on it, I wasn't really happy with the car anymore. Like I had some bad shake in the front from him putting in different axles and you know, it might've been stuff that I could have just swapped in like OEM axles or, you know, done some more work myself, but it was getting to the, I was like, you know what? I, I want something different. I want something so just one night I'm like, yep, I'm going to sell this. Yeah. Now and, we, we need to touch on this though. Since this is the trip that you thought about this, what were you doing in Binghamton, New York? I was dating a girl that went to school up there for a while. She was from, I went to high school with her. Yeah. And she went to school in Binghamton for a little while. Johnson City or Binghamton? Actual Binghamton. <laughs> That's amazing. Why? So, well, my first, my first. Did you date her too? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't date any girl from Binghamton. Uh, my first pro sponsorship with BMX was out of Binghamton. Oh, wow. Yeah, FBM. I don't know. If, I know you were more into skating than yeah, BMX, yeah. but FBM was a bike company that was made in-house in a shop in Binghamton, and they started a, a sub company called The Take, and that was the company I rode for. So oh, nice. I drove to Binghamton from Meredith, New Hampshire, twice a month probably. I you know, tw Every other weekend, I was driving Dude, up there. what years? Was this like so 2005, 2006? Oh my there? gosh! So my I was put on the team in 05. That's the company. Yeah. So in the same time frame, we were driving. We were <laughs> in the same like. Isn't that crazy? Like to be like in those like circles. Like yes, it could have been like and one I, store apart, one person yes. apart. Like isn't that passed crazy? you in traffic? That's actually on 88. Yeah, like that's actually how crazy is that? My wife now she's from up here. Yeah. She's when we met, we found out we knew other people and we were at certain things that like, how crazy know, is like, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, we were like this close. Like yep. we were so close. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Thing. But that's why I was, I was in Binghamton. The girl I was dating, she went to my high school, but she went to college in Binghamton. It's a rough so, place. So she went there. So I would drive like three hours on a weekend. And then before she had a car, she would take a bus down every other weekend, which I didn't really think much about it until like after we had broken up. I'm like, that was God, that had been terrible to send yeah. a bus for six hours yeah. or 12 hours round trip, round trip all weekend. Yeah. I'm like, that must have been terrible. I definitely took that for granted. Yeah. But that was a long time ago, and I'm grown. Right, right, right. But it's funny um, that those were the same years because I wrote for that company from 05 to 08. Yeah, it's, yeah. that's so crazy I was in stuff. Twice a month for a yeah, long week. Twice a month. Yeah. I was there like two years, twice a month. <laughs> Probably the same weekends, too. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, anyway, so you're on your way back from Binghamton. And, and I you had, had this epiphany. Yeah, I had this epiphany. So, yeah. I went and looked for some stuff, went to one dealership to look at a black Mark IV. And then I wanted a GTI. I wanted a 24, but I don't want a Jetta. I had a Mark III Jetta, but I wanted a GTI. I didn't really like I'm still not a huge, huge fan of like Mark IV Jettas. Like, I like them, but ultimately, I like GTIs. GTI, like, I yeah. liked I liked the GTI. So, I went, looked at one, checked this up on the internet, blah, blah, you know, whatever, back and forth. And then one day one of my friends like, hey, some dude out in Huntington, he's selling this one. It's like just under, just over 10 grand, 50,000 miles. It's silver. I'm like, oh. it's like, I don't want silver. I don't want a silver car. But I'm like, you know what? I'll go take a look. Went, looked at it. Car was super clean. He actually, so this is my silver car. This is the silver car that was in PVW, the one that like started all my Shea Bay stuff. Like yep. this is that silver car. What color were you looking for originally? Not silver. <laughs> just anything but silver uh, and anyone blue either i wanted okay. like black or they had like you know you had the special editions that were like the um right like those greens and like you had but some of those didn't have the 24 valve in it so like really i was going to end up with black or silver because yeah that's what i was going to end up with yeah so i got silver went to his kid's house met him liked the car blah blah gave him a deposit and then i bought the car after uh 100 stock came on steelies he refused to give me like the, the monte hours. carlos with it and uh um, that car was one of the first 24 valves that came to New York. Like he had to wait for the shipment oh, to wow. come and he went to the dealer, like paid for it and then yep. waited for it to arrive when they were, so my, it was a 2002 and a half. So that was like the first of the first of the 24 valves in New York. So he, so it was a one owner when you bought it. Same. Owner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then I was the second owner until I crushed it, but oh, well, oh I remember hearing because about no one that. bought it, so I crushed it. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna do. Oh. I can, I, we need to touch on that when well, we like, get to that point. I don't. I live in Long Island. There's no where I live in Long Island. There's no place for me to store a car. Like I, yeah. I can't leave it in my driveway, like with just wheels and nothing in it. Like yeah, I just but ended up scrapping it. What a yeah, what a pivotal car though in your like 
history, your personal history of like owning cars. Cause yeah. this was like, you'd, you'd argue that the VR Mark three was like the first car you started exploring with, but the not Mark, just maintaining the, Mark IV but, is the car though, but Mark four is the that, one that, that silver like one is dove. the car. Yeah, And you started yeah. basically started your business. Exactly. It started that with that, with doing the Shea Bay in it and stuff like that. That's where I learned all that. Like I learned that was the real basis of how I got to where I am now. And then 2008, 2009 ish when you got that car. No, that was, I got the car, I think it's 2007. Oh, okay. Because I remember 2009, I remember that year was the year that me and like Ryan Miller, I had gotten a bunch of parts off his air ride stuff of his car and I was upgrading my car. I remember mine being in the driveway for like a long time. That was, 2009 was like the first year I think I brought it out with like doing like Shea Bay stuff and like really started like pushing that car. Right. And then a lot of that car came together in like the last year I owned it. Um, but I did get to enjoy it. You know, fortunately for like a substantial period, yeah. I drove it, I drove it back and forth to Florida numerous times and, uh, um, different intake manifolds, different, I built, I think that car only had, well, that motor. Okay. So that motor that's in the silver car is the motor in my brown car. It's the same motor. Oh, okay. I bought a brown car without a motor in it, yep. but it had a driveline. And you still have the brown car. Yeah. It's in a friend's garage in Connecticut. So, um, hold on this month it is hold on it is the 18th so in about in about five days it'll be exactly three years since i've seen the car in real life oh man and it's and may will be five years since the car's turned on wow but you know life happens i, and get I haven't it. got yeah, around to it it's, it's upsetting because like the start of like every year like maybe december into january i'll be like yeah this year I'm going to get out. to it. And then about like halfway through January, I'm like, I give up already. I'm done. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't even know. Like, because shop family, shop oh. and family take precedence over me having my brown car, but I'm not going to get rid of it. It's my brown car. Like I have stuff stashed, like some stuff up there, some stuff in my office. I have some stuff working out of like, yeah. I have things and I'm going to do stuff because I'm going to lose my mind if I can't get to like build my brown car again. Like I, I want to work on it again. Like I like, I, right. I don't, I don't really actually enjoy driving. I enjoy building. So like I like building cars and I end up like rushing through portions of it. So like, I want to be able to get it and like do things again. And now, you know, talking, I built that car. I built that car. Like it was in PVW like eight years ago. Like, wow. Yeah. 2012 ish. No, no, sorry. It was in PVW in 2014, but I built the car, I had out to events and stuff like that. 2012, 2011. Yep. Like, so I built that car so long ago and I've, my skill set has come so far Right. since yeah, then. Yeah. Like I want to redo a and lot. That's a, that's a driving billboard for your business. So that's, and that's funny. Cause like people, I'm going to circle back to part of the timeline, but right. that's how people ask me like, Oh, how'd you get to like, uh, if they want to start doing what I do or how did I get here? So the way I did it was I built a car that Showcased. I built a car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, exactly. and like, um, that was the thing I built, I built the silver car, I built parts on it and then people saw the parts and they wanted the, those the parts. parts. Yeah. And that's how I really got into it. Air ride was like the first like service I was offering, but air ride, air ride was very, it was a very short time frame between putting air ride on the car and doing Shea Bay stuff. It was a very, it was less than a year in between there. Okay, yeah. So like they overlapped real, they overlapped. So but yeah, I started building stuff and people wanted what I had and I can offer other stuff. And then I built, I participated in building, um, Leah's, uh, 24 valve swap 20th, that yep. Mark four with the pink RSs and everything hers. And then my buddy had a boosted, uh, like a turbo 24 valve, a silver GTI like mine. And we built, we assembled like all three of those cars in the same time frame and like debuted them all at one of the solos, maybe like, you know, 2009. I think that yep. might've been, it might've been 2009. And that's why like, I remember it all being 2009. Um, and that was kind of, had you been, had you been making money doing stuff like that at that yeah, point? For, in, yeah. In 09? So yeah. when do you think? Before, even before that, like, cause I started doing air installs. So like. In like the 07, 08 era? Yeah, I had to have been. Cause like mm -hmm. my brother and my brother-in-law got air ride on that, put air ride on the Mark three Jettas before I did air ride. I wasn't really that into it in the beginning. So like they were, I helped them. It's plumbing. I like plumbing. So I did that stuff. Um, and this is during the silver car period. And then I, after a while, I decided I wanted to do air ride on the silver car. And then when that came about, after one of the H2Os, um, you know, like 2000, probably like 2007, one of those like H2Os. After that, that like into that winter was, I believe that was when like things kind of started going like from a business standpoint where like hard lines by swoops like started yeah, coming Yeah, well, I was going to ask when that started. Yeah, because that was when I, that was when I first met you. When it was like hard lines by swoops. When I first met you, because I was thinking about this, <laughs> I first met you at Wolfsgart 
in 2013. Okay, was that was that the first? That was the first time. That's the first time I can remember meeting you. Okay, and we all went to get breakfast in in the bag riders truck. In the bag riders truck, That's and Lindsay right. was yelling at everybody because everybody got in the, the bed of the, of the truck, and yes. she told everybody to get out, <laughs> which is great because you can't be in the bed of the truck. But right. we, I remember we went, and I actually remember. I don't know if it's gonna be like upsetting to him or not. I remember I was with Tech, and after we left, Tech was like, "Yo, that's like." John Ludwig, like he like doesn't follow anyone on Instagram, but like he follows me. Like he was like so pumped about that. And it was so oh, like funny goodness. because like you, I remember that those days of Instagram, you had like, you followed like 40 people. Like you didn't like follow anybody. Yeah. And it was interesting because like you could see that you just had Instagram to put stuff out, not to like receive anything. Well, whereas like, well, you know what happened and I don't mind touching on this. It's hilarious that tech, man, I miss tech. First I miss tech. I miss so tech much. so much. And Caitlin. Yes I, I, yes. I can't wait. I haven't seen them since I got married, but yeah. I hope to see them again soon. But it's hilarious. Tech said that because in, in 2013, I mean, I hadn't followed, I didn't follow like thousands of people. No, I remember I, checking the page. You had like, you followed well, like 40 and, people. And, and here's, and here's where that came from. Cause before it was like, I only, I followed maybe like a couple hundred people before that point only because I wanted to keep like the news feed. Cause at that point, the algorithm for Instagram was like, it was all chronological order. And, yes. and I was like the same way with like Facebook. Like I had done a lot of growing up between like Oh nine and like 2011. I moved to Nashville in 2012 and I just, I just had, I don't know. I just didn't like seeing just stuff I wasn't interested in. So I just didn't follow that many people, but I went through a breakup in 2013 <laughs> and uh, she kind of new people that I knew. So that's this and, time frame. This is this year. Yes, this is the year I'm talking about. Yes, exactly. So what happened was, it was after the breakup, I was just sick of seeing her name everywhere on Instagram, yes, on yes. my friends' posts or them communicating with her, just all in yeah, public. Like, yeah. So I just like, I went down to zero. I was like, I'm done. And it wasn't a business outlook. It wasn't anything like that. It was just to get away. It, yeah, I just didn't want to see you. I wanted to keep Instagram. I wanted to talk to my friends. I wanted to see their photos. Well, through the, like what was then well, like I, the, the this, um, explore page yeah, type thing. Yeah, on like what's, what's not like your like kind of stuff exactly. underneath there is like that. Because I remember you would comment on certain things. You'd comment on some of my stuff, you'd comment on other people's stuff. And I'm like, but you don't follow this person. So that means that you're, you're like actually using it to like look. I was browsing and looking. Browsing like how you, yeah. how it was originally intended yeah. to be browsed. There's still and, some guys, there's still, still some guys, uh, I don't need the name, that like took that personally. That I, I oh, I don't doubt it. When I, when I changed, I have a personal like, like people you wouldn't expect, like people oh, that no. we both know that like to this day have, it's been like really weird in oh. person since then because I stopped following them on Instagram in 2013 okay. and it's taken, and, it's, that extent. and it's, it's, <laughs> it's like manifested into like the way we coexist in like real life. And I'm like, this is like, I, I had a couple other friends that actually texted me and like, oh, thanks for the unfollow. Like almost as a joke, but you could tell it was like, I had, that's, it was what I, that's what I had. I'm like, Hey man, and so I, I know you in real life. We're yes. talking through text now. Right. So I have your phone number, right? Isn't so, that more personal yes. than Instagram? Well, like, and at that point I was like, all right, well, since we're going there, let me tell you why <laughs> I stopped following everybody on Instagram because I'm going through this, like kind of a serious thing. Like I'm not well right now. Like I've yeah. got this open wound and I've been through this like breakup and I'm really just trying to like, just kind of cut all that out right now. And so I don't need this from you too. Like if you want to call, like let's, let's go, you know, eat lunch and let's yeah. hang out and be actual friends. But so anyway, I just, it's hilarious that that, that is, was that time that tech was like, here's a follow you on Instagram. Yeah. Me. yeah. <laughs> Basically what that was, was that was the, I was on my way back to like following more people. And yeah. Stuff. That was the first time I, I met you. We went to get breakfast at the one place, the whole group of us. Yep. It was like mac and cheese or and, whatever. And like I, I, do, remember. I do remember that. Yeah, I remember yep. that. That was one of my, like that trip with Tech, that was one of my favorite trips I've ever taken. Like we decided we were going to drive up there. We drove up together. That we was got a to hang out weekend. with everybody. The weather was perfect the it whole was. time. It was just such a great event. I got to hang out with people. And it's, what's unfortunate is there are people, there are people, um, um, there are people I haven't seen since then. Since that wolf's cart? Like I still talk to them, but I haven't seen like. That was one of the last, that was the last time I saw Lindsay, like Will's wife. That was yeah, the last time yeah. I saw her. I haven't seen her. She's had kids since then. Like yeah. they have kids. I haven't seen, I've seen Will a couple of times, but I haven't seen yeah, her. Yeah, Will it's comes crazy. out of you know, and then. That was the beginning of them kind of like, like it, Will took a big step back from like That's when, yeah. being at shows and stuff. And yeah. he had like a crew of guys at the shop yeah. doing that. And, and, and which is good because he, he spent most of his time focusing on his family and, and Lindsay and all that, which is Yo, great. That's, that's important. Yeah. But so. that 2013 year, yeah, I had my 190 there that year. Correct. That that bagged 190 I had. Yeah. Um, 
And then you didn't have a car up there though, right? No, I drove up in Tech's car. I was on air ride, had like a hardline set I built, so we had it like at the bag riders barbecue. Yep. But that was it. Like it, yeah, we just wanted me and him just really just wanted to hang out. Like I'd met Tech for the first time earlier that year too. It was I went down to Connecticut to stay with Dan Crosley and I had my one ninety. Who else came out? Sammy Delart came out. Okay. And Boy, I think that was it. I think it was just a small crew of us. And Tech came up. <laughs> yeah, I got to apologize for the guys in the office over there yelling and screaming. For anyone that can hear, hear this, that. Yeah. <laughs> this picking up. But and then I, I looked over there. Customers showed up that they weren't supposed to show up for a little while. So how um, are we on time? You good? We're fine. All right. You know, good. I might have to step outside for a sec to let them know be a little bit. So you want it? Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, Corey, you want to sit in for a second? Okay, yeah, come, come on. In. <laughs> Sorry, business people, business. Corey and I are literally on our way home from Chattanooga, Tennessee right now uh, in my F-350 dually that I had Mason help me uh, purchase while I was gone. I left my, yeah, my 24 foot enclosed trailer down there, the Corvair, traded my Chevy for the dually, and we're currently on our way home. How's that going? Slow, I think is the best word to use. It's so (laughs) slow. I'm convinced, as are you, I'm convinced. So this is a We've talked about it on the podcast earlier. It's a 93 7.3 Turbo IDI, like pre-power stroke, F350 dually crew cab, two-wheel drive, five-speed manual. Now, this has an aftermarket Banks Sidewinder turbo setup on it. Now, it's clear. In this theory. Is like a, in theory, it, it has it. It's got the Sidewinder, like, air box on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we popped the hood, the first thing you looked, like, behind the motor, and you're like, oh, that's old. <laughs> And, and yeah, so it's so old that like the downpipe is one piece with the turbo. It doesn't like bolt on <laughs> separately. It's just one molded piece of oh, like my ancient aluminum. Yeah. And so it was clear the second we hit the road, especially with that 24 foot enclosed trailer behind us that, oh, this turbo doesn't work or something's happening where it, uh, yeah, th- that truck is so slow with that trailer behind it. Yeah. Like I've had my foot, my, I've had my right foot fall asleep more times. Cause I'm like, I'm like, un, like subconsciously pushing the pedal farther into the floor, thinking it was going to help us go faster. Yeah, man. I'd say average speed is probably 60, 65 yeah. on flat going flat, flat yeah. out. I've got the, I've got my foot in it the whole time. You back? Jumping back in. The swoops jumping is back. back. Thanks for jumping in for a second, Corey. It, it kept us, it kept us rolling. Basically all I did was I told... <laughs> Corey didn't even get a chance to even say anything. I was just talking about how slow that, how slow that dually is on the way home from Tennessee. Well, I will say, going outside, seeing the two like rigs outside, the two trailers, the two dualies, that's awesome it's out there. It's a good-looking both, setup, right? Both white both trucks, white. both big, big and close trailers. Like I really, I really enjoy seeing that in front of my I shop. Wish, like uh, that's how it kind of needs to be like all the time. Like I, I really enjoy dude, that. Dude, I wish we lived closer together. I know, me too. Really but you're cool. moving further away. Thanks, nah, I live four and a half hours from you right and now. And now you're moving further away. As if I ever got to see you. I know we don't have any time. I know. I know. Well, that does bum me out, it, but it is pretty, your rig is the rig I'd love to move up into, into a, see, it's funny is that I, a 12 valve or 24 valve? So, uh, 24 valve, six BT. Okay. So it's the 2004 and a half. So it's the one that has a little more torque yep. than the previous year and six speed manual rear wheel drive only. Right. So same t- with mine. Yeah. Yeah. It has a tune, uh, tune intake. I did some other little things out of aluminum ratty and I did some other, like, uh, I had a problem with the PCV system, like the crankcase bending. So I have a cash can on it cause it caused some issues that has a South Bend clutch um and matching like master and stuff and what a rig and it just it just books and like yeah. it's oh, awesome man. and you know it's white black wheels like just yep and that's it. what we were just talking about with that dually uh that we are convinced that that turbo is doing nothing but taking up space back there because oh, it's yeah, not probably but it's not know, doing anything. like I, like i said to you earlier not perfect excuse to upgrade yeah i'm gonna have to because I, there's no way i'm gonna have to do that before ocean city this upcoming year because we got a couple friends from germany coming over my friend ben from england's coming over we're going to have like a full rack of dudes in that crew cab hauling the century in the trailer, which weighs like 5,000 plus What's the trailer pounds. rated for like 7,000? Yeah, it should be. The The person that sold me that trailer, I bought it new down in Georgia. The person that sold me that trailer, I don't think, un- one of us didn't understand what was going on. It's got 3,500 pound axles, right? It's got two of them. So that's 7,000 pounds, right? Correct. She tells me on the phone straight up. Yeah, it'll handle a vehicle or weight of 3,500 pounds. And I was like, no. well, well, yeah, that's, I said, well, it's got two, it's got a tandem axle, right? They're both 3,500 pounds. She's like, yeah, but anything over 3,500 pounds is overloaded for that trailer. And I was like, mm, well, I don't think so. So I bought the trailer anyway. It's got 3,500 pound okay, axles. When you bought it, there are tie-downs in it for your car? Yes. Then she's wrong. 
Yeah, yeah, and and you know what the tie don't say? They're they're stamped seven thousand yeah. pounds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. 7,000 pounds is normally like the minimum for like an yeah. enclosed trail like that. Exactly. Like, that's, that's what I thought. Know. So, and I didn't argue with her. I was just like, okay. Yeah. Where, where are you going to go? Even, it's like, I'm, I'm buying it anyway. I'm just done with I'm this argument. Just give me, the, give me the trail. Let me get exactly. out of here. I'm done. I'm done. So I looked at the sheet because she sent me an email. I did this remotely, obviously. She yeah. sent me an email with like the, it's a tandem 3,500 pound axles. I'm like, all right, that's we're good to 7, go. 7,000 pounds. Yes. So the century, uh, here's what happened. I... Before I found the Century, I, I've, I've wanted, as I'm sure you, I wanted an enclosed trailer living in the Northeast. That was a dream to own an enclosed trailer because now you've got winter storage because I don't have a shop this big, nor did I have a shop that Corey and I have at the moment. I have a shop this big. I still store cars in the trailer. Yes. Okay. So it's, 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 it's winter storage for something. And if it's like foul weather going somewhere, yeah. the car stays dry and et cetera, et cetera. So I was, I was bound determined to buy an enclosed trailer last year. I needed it. Um, regardless of a move or whatever happened. I was like, I just need an enclosed trailer. So I started specking them out. And I've had a few friends buy some from down south. And obviously, they're, they're half the cost down south, but they're only two foot on center roof bars. Right. They're not built for snow load on the roof. Uh, they're non-pressure treated floor, not undercoated. But I mean, this is all stuff that, you know, guys like you and I will obviously, I'd rather pay half the cost for the trailer, bring it up here and do the work needed yeah. to like make it northeast livable. Yeah, yeah. So I was specking out some trailers. While I was doing this, uh, my buddy Mike Cashman has an 18-foot enclosed trailer that he he hauls his Model A in. And we hauled my Corvair in that trailer out to the Syracuse Nationals, the hot rod show last summer. So I was it, supposed to go to that one. Yeah, it, man, it was my first. Every summer I say I'm going to go, and I never did until this past year. It's full-blown insanity. That show is That's what unbelievable. I heard. I heard that. So we put the Corvair in that trailer, and it's an 18-footer. And I was looking at 18-footers. And it was a tight fit. I mean, it's like tight, tight, uh, tight, tight. That's a small trailer. Eight, so 18 foot yeah. small trailer. So I was like, well, I'll, I'll get a 20. I'll, I'll get a 20 footer. There'll be plenty enough space then. So then I started specking out a 20 foot trailer. Then I saw the seven series to that guy in LA. And then the same trip, obviously, as, as you know, I found the century, but the century I've always wanted, which is a long wheelbase. Right. That car is basically 20 feet long. It's like 19, right. 19 and a half feet long. So here we go, specking out a 24 foot enclosed yeah. trailer. And every time the trailer got bigger, the truck kept getting smaller and smaller. So here we are now with a 24 footer out here, which I'm super excited about because I've got the Corvair in there, weight distributed just right. And all my booth set up in front of the corner yeah. in the trailer. It's got more than enough space. And uh, yeah, man. So it's yeah. a great, it's a great looking setup out yeah. there. I, I really like it. Like mine, my, I, my trailers is, is 20 foot, right? Okay. Yep. So mine's 20 foot. It wasn't originally a car trailer, but the framing is built for it. So it's like 16 on center steel, like steel framed. Like it handles the weight. No problem. It just didn't have tie downs in it. Oh, okay. So I put tie downs in it. Yep. And, uh, uh, but mine, I haul GTIs and stuff like that. Like they fit in there. Like I put my brother's Mercedes in there. Like they fit no problem. Yeah, like yeah. I cram stuff in the front of, I don't, I don't care. Right. Um, but that one, I'm eventually going to sell it. And one of my customers has a 20 foot, 24 foot, like feather light, all aluminum trailer oh, great. that he wants to sell me. It enclosed. Oh, enclosed. Like oh, just like man. that, but like a 24 yeah. foot, uh, all, all aluminum feather light. That's like end goal wow. of enclosed trailers. Yeah, for sure. So he's like, Oh, you know, I'll sell it to you. And we work out payment plans. I'm like, yeah, man, sounds good. Like I'm working on your car. We just, Kind of barter roll this stuff together somehow like i'm like yeah because that's like an end goal like i bought this trailer with intention to eventually sell it because it's only 20 foot right or actually the real reason why i'm eventually going to sell it is because it's not vinos and yeah. i run no cap so because i have no cap as soon as i start to go uphill with it the fuel mileage tanks i bet because i'm towing a brick wall a brick behind up, you you know up yeah. the wall but you have a little bit of a v and that makes all the difference. And yep. so his feather light is V knows it's perfect. Has a winch in it. It's like wow. everything I want in like a forever enclosed trailer. It's a 20 foot. You said 24 foot. 20. Oh, so it's man, 24. So it's, so it's, so it's, so it's cause I want to be able to put, I want to be able to put a little bit of a work bench. I yep. want to have tools and stuff with me when I go places. Cause right. I always end up working and having to fix stuff like constantly. So like, right. it'd be cool to have like a, like, like my truck, I have underneath my like time to cover. I have a toolbox and my tools in it. And then I have my actual toolbox, like behind my driver's seat. Like I always have stuff with me all yeah, the time. Like all my plumbing to. stuff, all my regular tools, drills. And like I have all, all the time, just have it. So like, it'd be nice to have a trailer with stuff like already stored in it. Right. And, uh, and then eventually when I bring the brown car out to shows, I can put it in the trailer. I can put it in this trailer, but like when I eventually bring it out and, uh, uh, and then, on t and then aside from that, I want to pick up eventually a, uh, like a two car open, like gooseneck trailer. Yep. But one that's flat decked. So I can also put equipment on it. Right. 
uh, cause like I borrowed one to move here. I borrowed like a, a 40 foot, um, you know, 40 foot, just straight, straight decked open trailer to move. I did a few trips to move the shop here. Right. Uh, but you can't put cars on that one. Cause you know, it's like over, it's, you know, yeah, real like tall. Here. It's so a it's deck like, over trailer. Yeah, yeah, so it's like huge. So like I want to get like a nice low one. They're mostly like down south and out west is where like you'll primarily find those. Yep. So yep. eventually I'm going to pick up one of those because like it'd be cool to eventually because I want to start going to more events with my son being older now. Perfect. And I, I can't put him in the brown car. So yeah. like it'd be nice to like me and my son and me and my son and my wife to like go to events, have like the brown car on the trailer and then either have like another one of the customer cars to like bring to events if we do a booth or whatever yep. or to put her car on the trailer because – if we're driving around town, it's easier. To, like if we're going like H two, going to like a destination like right. Solo, uh, yep. in Georgia, it'd be easier to have her car drive around than drive around Dooley and these like you know, these little towns and streets yep. and stuff. So yep. like, it'd be cool. Plus, she can't drive manual, so like we kind of end up stuck oh, if something I'm happens su- to I'm me. I'm surprised about that. Yeah, it's been one of those things that I've never actually had a car since we met that's really been good like, for her to learn. Good to on. learn on. I get like that. I had my GT, my, my silver car. Yep. Like that would have been the best one. But still, at that point, it wasn't exactly like the best car to learn on so like just really i haven't got around to it i know it's 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 it's, 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 you know but like in a dual you do not like a dually is not something you learn how to drive manual on no like you don't no like especially mine the one i'm driving right now no you have to use like all your force on your you know to push that clutch in and everything right yeah when i called you last night we were in traffic on 81 and i jokingly i before when we left chattanooga uh, just yesterday morning, I joke and we said to Corey, I'm like, well, when we hit the inevitable traffic at some point in the Northeast, I'm really going to wish I had not waited forever to find a manual because yes. that was like the criteria. It's more fun though. It is. And you feel like you're driving a truck. And when you get to that hill, you, you can choose what you're You feel like in. you're driving a truck. And that, oh my God, like I'm so, I was having a conversation with, 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 uh, with Jack Dean recently about the newer trucks, the newer dualies. I'm like, I'm going to swap a manual into them. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like what? Like think about it. First of all, if brand I brand new af- Dodge Lariat with an NV 4,500 behind it, <laughs> think about it. If I can afford that truck, right. It's super expensive truck. If I can right. afford that truck, I could definitely afford to swap manual into it because you're already spending all this money. Like I can, yeah. if I have that money, I'll put a manual in it. And right. like, like the Cummins, the block is the same shape. So you just put the transmission in it. Like, yep. At a, pedal assembly and like it's up until what two know, years ago you could get a manual like the, the like the dodges like and the fourth the fourth the, the fourth dodges. gen yeah those which you know now they have the fifth gen starting 2019 ish but before yep. that the fourth gens came yes. some of them came rear wheel drive six speed manual some of yep. them came four wheel drive six speed manual and that's what i'd like to get next would be a fourth gen like i love the fourth gens like the yeah. way like the bed like starts from like the cab the bed like flares out i just love it's everything about truck. it yeah and uh my friend jeff mcdonough from uh Gatlin, uh, Gallatin, just north of North Nashville, Tennessee has one, him and his, I think his father, it might be his father's truck, but he uses it to haul cars with, but it, um, boy, that's like a 2000, it's recent, like 2015 or 16, yeah, they, they maybe made 17. Them, they made them up till 2000 and even, even 2019, 2020, they had the, the fourth gen bodies that were, they were labeled something else like, um, oh. like a classic or something because they were like trying to get rid of overstock, but yeah. you got a killer deal on a fourth gen that was 2019 or 2020 it's like yeah i'm gonna do that and just yeah. buy that car and his is a manual i got to drive see, that around nashville a couple years ago and i was like man this thing is amazing see that's what makes it that's what makes driving a, yeah that's like that's really driving is that's, when you have a manual transmission truck with a trail like that's really driving that's why i searched for a manual i, I had plenty of opportunities to buy a nice rust-free low mileage needs nothing southern truck down there but it was an automatic boring like, no yeah, I just, I didn't want to, my Chevy was an automatic. And I'm like, uh, yeah, nah. the, the dually I had before, I had, I had a second gen Cummins before this, and that was automatic. And like, yeah, eh, it's cool. It's cool to dually, but like, all right, just step on the throttle and then, and then I'm, I step I'm glad on the brake pedal. The same way I do. That's, yeah, because I was super I excited. To... Like, I like, I like being mad. I like shifting gears. I like, yep. you know, I like, I like that. It's, You're involved in the process of yeah. driving. And also, I feel like towing is, one, I, I like that in the sense of towing, you actually need to require some skill to toe right and two it i feel like i am doing more like i got I, i'm more in control i i'm i'm physically more in control but yep. like automatic transmission there's a chance you can step on the throttle and like that's it transmission's done like you're done I, like your clutch starts slipping you're like all right it's starting to slip let me just like do this like i'm gonna drive manual. it like, you can kind of like do yeah. that and shit like your master goes like all right, i'll just jam it into gear and just keep going yeah, like, the single truck, shift it and go keep yeah. going like yeah. it'll work yeah so, like i like i like manual stuff but. exactly no i feel the same way yeah, but, but um, um, backing up to backing up to 2013, uh, Wolfscart. Yeah. So you didn't have a car there, but when did? 
between the silver and the brown car when okay. did, what when let's talk about the brown car so silver and brown car i know all the timeline for this perfectly because <laughs> the reason why i know it is because i bought it i bought the shell that is the brown car now like a month after i met my wife i went down to <laughs> i went down to florida for ian and leah's wedding i got down to florida i drove me and leah leah flew up to new york to get her wedding dress we put her wedding dress in the back of my GTI and then proceeded to drive to Florida with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't like, uh, you know, it's not like a regular, oh, it was like a $500 wedding dress. She went all out. All out. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I have to not like, I normally not trying to get in a car accident, but like, holy shit, if someone rends me, they're going to hit this dress. Yeah. It's going to be really bad. <laughs> but we drove down and I have no idea what happened, but I got to Florida and I decided I wanted to buy the shell that's my brown car. It was at a shop, my friend's shop in Mayo Park, New York. It was driver sport and there's a car there. And I joked about buying it. I, I don't know I don't know what happened. I got to Florida, I'm like, I'm gonna buy it. Oh, so you basically like, had time I, to think about it on the drive down? I hadn't even thought about it. I just got there, I'm like, I wanna buy the shell. I wanna, it was a silver R. So my plan was to take the silver R shell. So it had no front bumper, no interior, like no seats, but it had all the other interior. No steering wheel and no motor, but the full drive line. Yep. Silver. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take the silver car. I'm going to do a shade bay on it, cut the rain tray out, do a bunch of other stuff, put my bumpers on. I'm going to convince people this is the same car, that this is my silver car that uh. I, just took the, I just took the tray out of and it's all-wheel drive now all of a sudden, right? Right, right. right. No. <laughs> so get to Florida, decide that I'm going to buy this car, which I could have purchased in person, but I decided to do it when I went to Florida. This is 2010. Okay. Call the kid up. Send him five hundred dollars, like from my bank account to his bank account, and then I got the loan for the rest of it. I'm like, all right, just like I went outside and made the phone call, came back in. I'm like, all right, I, that shell, that driver's port, I just bought it. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I bought that. It's mine now. <laughs> so I like, went back up, started working on it. It went to Dave Pastor of Slaw to be painted, but yep. in between me, I did all the welding in the bay before it got to him. I dragged, we dragged the car from the yard into the shop, and in doing so, I noticed that. It snowed during that. The plow hit the door oh, man. of the car. So the door was dented. I'm like, great. So now I have to respray this. And then I started getting into like the car, like the bay, grinding this and all the stuff. And I'm like, all right, well, all the paint on the roof line's messed up. All the paint here. And I'm like, Ugh, this car's been resprayed. It was silver and they sprayed it silver again. Uh. But you could tell it was one paid job on top of another. And I'm like, damn it. So I'm like, all right. Dave Pastor came, picked it up, brought it back, asked him for a price. I'm doing it. You give me the price. And I'm like, look at man, I'm not going to try to, I'm not trying to lowball you or complain about this price, but if I'm spending that much money on a paint job, I'm going to spend a little bit more and I want you to change the color. Like I'm not spending thousands of dollars to keep it silver. Right. I'll spend thousands of dollars to change the color 100%, yeah, yeah. but I'm not spending a thousand dollars, um, thousands of dollars to keep it silver. Like not happening. So spent two months picking out colors. Brown was one of the ones my wife suggested. And then I came across, it's a Honda color. Oh, okay. And it's like a CRV. Yep. And they have black trim on them. So it worked out really well because my car is brown with black wheels. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm on my black wheels. I can see how that looks in real life. Yep. I painted it brown. So that was so 2011 now is when I got the car back and I built that, assembled that whole car, built everything for it in my parents' driveway. Like new bushings, new bearings, new, new everything, new hard line setup. It was the motor from the silver car, went into it, and I put the front wheel drive transmission in the brown car as well. And then I just put stub axles in the rear end so it could be right. freewheeling, yep. but not destroy my wheel bearings. Yep. So did that, but in doing so, in doing all this, doing the bushings and the bearings and all this stuff, I realized how actually, in what terrible condition that car was. So like now it's freshly painted, the outside looks great. The other side's not rotted, but like I get down there and I'm like, all right, well, I gotta do all these bushings, all these all these things that were perfect on my GTI. I'm like, I should've just swapped floor pans. Like, I should've yeah. just swapped floor yeah. pans, like this is absurd. <laughs> And then, but I did all my parents' driveway, swapped the harnesses over, did everything, got the car running. Uh, had some issues with it, which is like every, all the time. Finally got it running. We, okay, wanted to debut it at SOWO 2011. Okay. I missed like riding with my friends down to like stay and like work and like haul ass. I'm like, all right, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it running. Right. I got it running. And I drove around, I drove like around this triangle that was in front of my parents' this house. This was like right before the show, probably. This was the Friday before the yeah, weekend. Yeah, of course. I'm going to drive down this night. That's what I'm doing. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> my friend, my friend that lives over there, we're going to, I'm going to, it's my friend Jay's who owns a uh, uh, Broadway Static. He used to live across the street, from, like okay. kind of across the street from me. Yep. And uh, I'm like, all right, 
I'm going to finish the car. Me and him, we're going to hop in it. We're going to go to Georgia. We're going to do it, right? Get the car, drive around the block. And I was like, I pull in the driveway and I just sat there. I'm like, it's not happening. There's so much more, like, not wrong, but like, this car's not making it 800 miles. Like, yeah. I was so just like defeated. And uh, I didn't go to Soho that year. And uh, which that was whatever. I was more defeated about the car because there was in, that was actually the second time in that like rush to get to Soho. Like a few months prior, I gave up. I'm like, I'm running into too many issues. I'm like, not going to make it. And I didn't work on it for a few days. And then I got like back into it. And I was like, all right, I'm going I'm to try to do it again. And then, so it was like one step back and then second step back. So whatever. So after that, I worked all the bugs, finally like get it like running. I had this issue where it was like uh, misfiring a whole bunch. Like it was really, turns out an O2 sensor was broken and back feeding like the ignition system. Cool. Resolve it. Super simple. Just unplug the O2 sensor and car runs. Sweet. Drive up the block, come back. <laughs> steering wheel, it's like not turning. I'm like, my power steering pump just died. Uh, like seriously. One thing after another. Like seriously. But once that was sorted, I drove that car the remainder of 2011, like up until November. I used to drive it like every weekend to visit my wife up in uh, uh, Pleasant Valley. So it was a hundred mile drive up to Conic. Yep. Super pretty drive. Like I love the drive. So like I drove the car from my parents' driveway to her driveway. I didn't stop at the store. I didn't, I'm bringing this car anywhere. Like it's just going from point A to point B. That's it. Yep. But so from fixing the power steering pump, which was late, it was June sometime to November. I drove that basically every weekend to see her and then to events during there with zero issues. Like there was not one issue with the car the entire time. And then in the following spring, 2012, I went to do some work on it. I'm taking some parts off. I'm like, this, this feels really unfamiliar to me. And I'm like, oh, because I haven't taken this car apart since I started driving it. This right. is new for me. Yeah. I've never actually take, I didn't to take this car apart. It worked the entire remainder of last year, zero issues. And then I did some work on it. And then I drove it to 2012. I drove that, you know, Shea Bay car. Fixed back racing seats, like yep. no AC, no heat, drove it to Soho and back. And uh, it was pretty brutal. Yeah. It was pretty brutal because like the factory foam that's like in the Recaro Profile SPGs is like egg crate. It's brutal. Right, it's right. brutal. So I could only last like an hour and a half before like my, my legs were like, no, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I had the seats recushioned, like the inserts recushioned like right before I left. Yep. And it was awesome because I went from an hour and a half of being uncomfortable I was uncomfortable, unbearably uncomfortable to, I can go six hours before like I really started getting uncomfortable. Right. And on a six hour span, somewhere in there, you probably already stopped to get someone to eat or whatever. So you've already taken a break. So it right. worked out really well. Yeah. I still, it was still rough. Like it was still rough, but like I drove there and back, no issues with the car. Um, you and I both have, you and I both was, have rough solo drive experiences. Yes. <laughs> so that one, that was 2012. That was the one we were talking about earlier when I was walking on the, when every time I walked on the street, people would like that was yeah, that yeah. one yeah yeah well that that was the b well not the very beginning but that's the that beginning was, that of, was the beginning of the brown of, car that was the yeah, first yeah, yeah. Yep. It, you know the brown car was at h2o the 2011 yep. but so it was h2o and then that Soho. those were like the big like things for that car and um but that was that was a pretty dr brutal drive but i made it back no issues at some point during from that on i, I took the car apart put the old drive in it new trans new header new fuel rail a bunch of the odds and ends and now mind you in me talking about all this, this stuff to the car and all the stages you've seen the brown car and all this stuff. There was never a full interior assembled in the car until the night before my PVW shoot. <laughs> I legitimately <laughs> never assembled the interior. I don't care. I don't right. care. I my don't, car, I'm the brown car, interior guy either. my brown car, all I care is that you look at the bay. Like that's yep. all I give a shit about is the bay. The yep. bay is like the thing with that car. And, uh, Nothing but, wrong with that. Yeah. Right. But yeah. then I put the interior in and, um, but, um, the hate, the hate did that. Do you know John the hate? Yeah, I don't hate. So to hate did Defeater. that with, yeah, he, he did that with me before, uh, uh, simply clean 2016 when I was working on my right hand drive seven series, that BMW. Yeah. He basically said, Hey, uh, I sent some of the build picks to PBMW. They're interested in running it. And the car's on my dad's lift in pieces. And it was a, it was like a one week, just over a one week push to get the car done for simply clean. And I wasn't really that interested in taking it. I had a friend taking a two car enclosed trailer and he's like, Hey, you can put it in yeah. my trailer. We can drive it down there together. And I'm like, ah, maybe that then the hate was like, you want to shoot it for PBMW? They're interested. And I'm like, what, what? So now like, yeah, the next week was like, all right. So basically like you with an interior, 
that car was basically stock interior, but it was a nice seven series. So it was like a nice interior, yeah. but I'd never done a trunk, anything in the trunk before. Like I didn't really, I didn't care. Right. Like, you're like, yeah, you're just like, I didn't function. care. Yeah. I, I get it functioning and I'd like hide it, just yeah. hide it away. Like yeah. whatever. And so now I'm like, well, oh man, he's going to want to like shoot photos of the trunk or something. So uh, same kind of deal, literally with days left. I put together a hardwood floor. I, I made a section that was large enough to go in my laser machine and I laser engraved the BMW logo into wood and I put red illumination to ma match the cabin. Yeah, so I, I understand that because I was like, for a magazine feature, I was like, I have to do this. I don't want to, but I have to now because yeah. they're going to want to see the trunk. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I, it's just ridiculous. And like, um, so like, you know, in so there, what year was that? Was the PVW feature? The PVW was shot in, in uh, it was either October or November of a, uh, it was October of uh, 2013. 13, okay. Who shot it? Sam Dobbins. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, so that had, makes sense. He had like, that's when he was like driving around the country. So yep. he like came and he hung out for a few days and like cool. we assembled, the, finished assembling the car in the driveway and stuff. Like it ran and everything, but like the interior wasn't together. And I had some touch up bits for like the bay, like little pieces I wanted to put in. And yep. and uh, and then we went and shot the car and it was, it was awesome. Um, but that was, it's funny because I drove it then and that was actually the next year is when I had to stop driving and I had some issues with the motor and I stopped driving it. Um, but also the following year, so that was 2013, 2014 is when January of 2014 is when, uh, at the time, hard lines by swoops, we rented our first shop. Cool. And, uh, and, uh, we rented our first shop. And so the car went in the garage for a while and then eventually I brought it out to some events. Um, but then I was like kind of having some issues with it. And then towards that fall of 2014, it, I, um, the cam phases on the motor are C's. So like the timing, I've had issue timing, ish timings with issues. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> timing oh my issues. God. Timing <laughs> issues. Thank you. <laughs> Holy shit. So, wow. It happens to me and I just roll so, with right, it. So to the point where, to the point where fuel is actually coming out my exhaust. So like if I turn the car wow. on from cold start, there's just a puddle of fuel in the exhaust. So like my, my blocks like damaged now because of it and stuff like that. So yep. it just ended up going away and I was like, Oh, I'm going to fix it. And that was 2014. And now it's 2020. That's, that's what we were saying before yeah, we went so live. Like, yeah. It's but just like, been sitting, but in that time we were in a first shop for, we in a first shop for like seven months. We ended up having to leave there. We had some issues with the landlord and got lawyers involved and stuff like that. And we took a pretty big hit, but we needed to get out of there. Yep. And then, uh, I worked out of my garage for a couple more months because before that, so I worked on my parents' driveway, right? That's what I was talking about with all that. Yeah. Then during, after the brown car was running and driving, like I said, it was 2011. Uh, so to end of 2011, I signed on a house, uh, bought a house, closed on a house, closed on a house. <laughs> so that was 2012, I had a garage there that I could fit my car in. It was, it was 17 by nine and a half, which is, the size of my front wheels, which is why I remember that number. <laughs> and uh, like, that was my garage. My garage was a fit of Paulie wheel. Um, but I worked in the driveway. I had the welder set up in there, welding bench, workbench, everything. That's where I like did work out of. Yep. And um, so that was like, I had customers bring their cars there. I had a fence set up and I'd work on cars in the driveway as professionals can be. And then it started getting to the point where I was like, all right, this is not going to work anymore. And my wife was talking about how she wanted to do something different and she wanted to own a business so we decided that we were going to make hard lines by swoops a like you know we're going to go business. further with it we're going to incorporate yep. it we're going to do the whole thing right and that was early um that was early 2013 2014 we signed a lease on a place and we moved in and uh then seven months later we ran into an issue with from day one we had issues with the landlord and uh, that was that was quite the learning experience of like like you know hindsight's 2020 like you yeah, look back to sure. the original meeting with this guy and you were like that right there that was the red flag of yep. all red flags, like right there. So like, but fortunately from that, from like, we went to that terrible situation and then January, 2015 got into the last shop. We were there for five years. Yep. That shop, uh, a friend of mine hit me up one day. He's like, Oh, my uncle's renting out this space. He gives me the phone number. I'm like, I know this phone number. It was a steel yard. That's around the block from my grandparents' house, which is where my brother lives. My brother owns the house now, him and his, his family. And, um, I'm like, Oh, I know this guy. I know this place. I was just there. I buy my steel from there. I went there. It was all he offered. I went to see one spot. It was a. It's a overall it was a seven thousand square foot building, but he was dividing it up. Right. He's like, oh, you want to rent this part? It's X amount of dollars. All right, cool. He goes, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I have somebody looking to rent the whole building, and I'd rather do that. I understand. Didn't hear from him for a couple of weeks, and he calls me back, and he's like, hey, I rented out the front half. 
but it comes to sh I'll talk to you about another spot. Back half, which is the building we rent ended up renting, he's like, I'll rent you this for X amount of dollars. And I'm like looking at it, it's like big. It's 2,400 square foot. And I came from the first shop, I left this out, 560 square foot. Yeah, yeah, small. That's how big the last shop was. Small. That's yeah. half of the unit that Corey and I are in right now. And that's, that's small. That's like, that's like from the, the break to the door. Like it's yeah. nothing. Like it's yeah. nothing. So, um, so then you went. So, okay. So went to that 2,400 square foot building. Like he's like, oh, here it is. And I'm like, wow, this is like big. Like I need this. I want this. But I'm like, it's a bit on my price range. I'm like, can I sublet? He's like, yeah, I don't mind. I was like, all right, cool. And I mentioned earlier, Jay is from Broadway Static. He was looking for a shop space and yep. he wants me tiny. I'm like, hey man, perfect. You want to, you want to, you want to rent some space with me? And he's like, yeah, so in pictures, boom, we like signed a little contract between ourselves and like went, gave him the money for the place. And I was there for five, like, you know, Harlan's a Swiss, Swiss built was there for five years and he was there for like two, two years. Yep. And it worked out really well that the conversation when I was going to tell them that I needed to basically kick them out because I need all the space. Right. Was like, they're, they're my, they're uh, Jay's and Jay. They're two of my like best friends in the world. And, uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to tell them I'm kicking you guys out. You gotta get out. Like, I'm just gonna, you know, make, you know, bust their balls or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, before, right before that, they're like, Oh, we have to talk to you about something. Uh, we got an opportunity to move to Virginia, fortune auto, blah, blah. So we're going to leave is, is that going to mess you up? I'm Perfect like, I'm like, that's great. Cause I was going to tell you, you got to get the fuck out. Like, like yeah. you got to get out, <laughs> but no, like that, it, it, it worked, everything worked out super well and I had the shop. I had the whole shop space yep. and it worked out really well. And that was a great, great shop. Um, well, in the fast forward to fast forward working on the island and obviously moving up here to, I mean, I don't know, is Fishkill technically upstate New York? I consider it to be upstate, but I do people too. don't. But it, if, yeah, if you're yeah. like outside of like Manhattan and like, into like West Chester, right. what you're upstate you're north. north. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. north. You're so you're here, you're here in upstate New York now yes. in an even larger yes. facility. And I mean, you've got, I mean, for those listening who can't see this, I mean, there's what, four or five parked this way over there's there. There's six cars over there and there's four cars in this row. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, and, uh, you, I have, and there's room for another one. I have two more in a trailer. <laughs> and you don't have That's any right. backyard buddies because if those five in the corner over there run backyard buddies, you'd obviously have 10 in the corner. Over yeah, there. yeah, I know. But, yeah. but anyway, it's a big, it's a big space. Yes. I mean, we were nicer. just talking, you just got a second bridge port brought yes. in. I mean, you are tooling up and it's, I mean, Corey and I are both just kind of like drooling over the stuff you have in here because oh, cool. I mean, even though you're just a one man operation at the moment, it's, it's pretty awesome to see that. Yes, the move cost you a ton of money, as it does anyone. It was no, there was no way around it. Exactly, like, it had to be done. So, but you're here. I mean, stuff set up. Uh, what an awesome. I mean, and you're closer to your family now too. Correct. I mean, like I said, only, you only like twenty miles away. Like, and exactly. I live with them now, as opposed to the last like thirty four months where we were apart, trying you know, to make the business work and the family work from distance, yeah, and then yeah. go th you know handling some other family issues and right, things like that. Right. So it's like you know we may do what we had, and fortunately the last shop worked out really well and I was able to live in my brother's house like around the block from the shop yep, yep. but um, long distance family yeah. thing that's tough because you do have a kid and that's that was brutal that's, so yep. only you know it averaged out to seeing them like 24 hours a week yeah like that's, that's what good. it like averaged yeah. out to. it was brutal so yeah um a few months ago was when I decided because we originally like I said earlier we wanted to buy property buy things and things just right. aren't working out right now right. or that it just wasn't working out so a few months ago I'm like I don't care I don't I don't care what it costs. We're I'm moving off Long Island. Like I'm, I want to see my wife and son every day. Like I'm, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if they're going to a smaller shop. I don't care if to work in my. Yeah. I don't care if I have to work in my in-laws' driveway. I don't care. Like end of like, end of 2019. I am leaving this island. Like I don't. I'm seeing my family every day. I'm not dealing with this anymore. Yeah. And Good move. um. And uh, you know we didn't really find anything. It was getting close. I'm like oh this sucks. Blah blah. And then like I didn't have like we didn't like. We didn't have like the funds secured for like down, you know, deposit on a shop. And then I, it was it's funny how things work out. Like I secured a deposit and then I like secured a deposit. And I think like the next day or the day after I was like, Oh, there's this space. It's X amount of dollars. It's in fish kill. I already spoke to the guy. We're going to meet him on Sunday. Oh, I was like, all right, great. Like, cool. So like, awesome. So that's this space. We came, met yep. him, shook hands. But he's like, Oh, I have to talk with someone about well, nonsense. But, like the next day, it was a Sunday, like the next day he calls my wife and he's like, all right, you know, let's do this. Can you sign the lease tomorrow, Tuesday? And we're like, no, like we can't do it tomorrow. And actually during this, this is, unfortunately during this one, my, my aunts had passed away. Me and my wife had to head to Boston. And because we had to head to Boston, I couldn't get the money for the deposit oh. in time. So I had my parents who were meeting, had to go to the funeral as well. 
they brought money to Boston so they can hand it to me so I could deposit it in a bank in Boston. So it would be in my account on time for Thursday, which is when we had a scheduled appointment with the attorneys to yeah. sign the leases, like all this stuff to get everything lined up. But Hey, we, we like got it done. And, uh, and, uh, and that was, um, that was November of 2019 right, that we did that. November. And then yep. we started moving. We started having access to this building on December, mid December. Yep. And like, I had to come in, like do the floors and, and like organize, you know, like really like kind of get things going. And, right. and then, but at the same time, I'm still working. I'm one guy. So exactly. like I have to work in, in, yeah. in Oceanside where the old shop was and yep. still drive back and forth and the holidays were kicking in and you're like, there's just traffic and, and people really aren't spending anything on cars prior to the holidays, after the holidays. Yeah. So it's like, right. but I still have so many builds like going on. I have to take care of all this and order material, you know, just the regular, the re the regular every day run my business. And then on top of that, figure out the logistics of transporting a 2,400 square foot shop with nine cars that is packed out. I right. had, I yep. have the lathes. Uh, I had one of the bridge ports there. My bands, all my equipment, all my equipment, all my, my horde of Mark four parts, like <laughs> so much, like so yeah, much stuff. So much stuff. And like, I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. And I didn't have access to a trailer at the time. And then I want, I wanted to, you know, think that stuff wasn't just things weren't lining up. And then I was able to borrow a, a trailer from, from Jack yep. Dean. He lent me a trailer yep. and where I was in the industrial park, the tons of pallets and I have access to a forklift. So Perfect. cool. Just started stocking up on pallets, put them in the shop. I would load stuff up at night, like on pallets. And then, and then over the, the, um, Beginning to like mid January, I had a few friends like come help me out here. You know, different days they can come help me out. And it was just like, all right, cool. Put stuff on pallets, saran wrap them, put them on the yep. trailer, and Let then like up. make sure I have enough straps. Go to Home Depot, buy more straps, like all the stuff. And like, and then like, all right, cool. But like a lot of these trips, a lot of these trips, I I didn't get the trailer loaded until like ready to drive until right. like eleven twelve, like eleven p.m. twelve a.m. at night. And so then I'm driving up here. At like I got here at like two in the morning, two thirty in the morning, but because the shop was empty and there's a door at both sides, I would just drive him with the truck and trailer, disconnect the trailer <laughs> and then just drive out in my truck. And I'm like, I'll take care of it tomorrow. And, right. but because of that happened, it created like a vicious like cycle of it where I come back here the next day, unload here, go back to the long Island, load up. And again, I'm not done until 12 o'clock at right. night Working. and, it's, and yep. it's cold. And like, yep. and it's just, it was, it was, it was, it was tough. And then like the, the first official day of the move, uh, spam, uh, Nick from MPB, yep. he came, yep. he came to help me out and he has a little like Dodge 1500, like fourth gen. Right. And I'm like, all right, we can, he's pulled my enclosed trailer before we'll put my enclosed trailer on his car, on his truck. I got the open trailer with my truck. We're going to do a big load. My friend, Anthony Mealy and his fiance, they came and met me and like, we're like, all right, we're going to take everything. That we did a bunch of stuff. Awesome. Load up my trailer, hooked it onto, hooked it onto, uh, Nick's car. <laughs> and it just gets lower and oh, lower yeah. and lower. And I'm like, oh no, we overloaded like the trailer. So we had to take stuff out of the trailer. Yeah. It's like 10 o'clock at night now. And we started, we started at like eight. Yep. Like, All right. And 8 AM. This is 10 PM. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we, uh, unload stuff out of there and then he then drove up here and then it's another like two and a half hours or hour, two hours for him to get home. Yeah. But he, he came up here. We actually unloaded the, my trailer when we got here, we took the time and loaded the trailer and, uh, and yeah. And then he just like left my one enclosed trailer outside and that was, that was it. But that was, it was funny. Cause I'm like, you got a little baby truck. We probably shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> like, yeah. I get like real trucks, but, yeah. but you know, it was a huge help. I couldn't, I couldn't do the move without the people that helped me. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do the move. It was, do you know Nick from, uh, do you know Nick from just being down that way? Cause he's obviously on Staten Island. I don't know how I know Nick. Like, Nick Rice BMX, you've ridden with him. Uh, well, Nick and I were both on that. My first pro sponsorship was Nick's first pro sponsorship. We were teammates on the same team. That's we'd met each other through BMX before that. See, it's, but that's how we know each other through it's BMX. Funny you say that because I never knew he was a pro BMX rider until now. Until just now. Until just now. Until you just said it right then. Really? I've known him for like almost ten years, over ten years now. That is hilarious. That that never came up in conversation. Never came up. Yeah, I've known him Nick, for over ten years now. Yeah, and. Uh, but I met him through uh, friends I used to have. They used to ride BMX, so they used to ride. I remember hearing about him. Right, right. And then I remember seeing him at a show or two. And then I think we actually started conversing through uh, Tom Espo because I was friends with Tom. Yep. And then I met like Tom's friend through Tom. And I met 
Nick, and you know, oh, cool, they're in Staten Island, I'm in Long Island. All right, we're gonna go to the, this event in, in Jersey, this event in Delaware, wherever. All right, cool, we'll all meet here and we'll go down because, like, perfect. Tom was a Mark IV kid, I had Mark IV, so like that right there. And we all just like that's how we all started like conversing, and that's how I, that's how I met met Nick. And and then the last few years, though, we've we've you know become closer and as friends and stuff together. like that, yeah. yeah. And like, from and you bus- did business aspect, me and him worked together, like, that's great. Very, we worked very, very well. I did all the work on his Mark II, yep. a bunch of work on his Mark II, but like. Me and him like get along, like me and him get along just really well, just in general. So like, that's yeah, nice. he's he's a good dude. He, he he's is, a great and, dude, and I'm yeah. so happy. And I tell him this, I tell him this myself too. I I'm so happy that in the BMX industry, in the community, I say in the community, not necessarily the industry, because yes. that makes it sound like people have jobs and are doing things. But us riders that weren't making a ton of money, like it was, I was curious to know even where I was going to end up in a 10 year lifespan, but there were some people where you were like, they were like, whether or not they were inner city kids or whatever. And it's like, Oh, without BMX, this dude's going to go nowhere. Like he's not going to do anything. And not that Nick was one of those cases. I'm just saying on the back end of BMX, once that train ride was over. Yeah. I am so stoked that he and, and myself, we both have started businesses that kind of exist inside the automotive realm, but like he's killing, he's such a hard worker and he kills it. And I couldn't be happy for him. Oh, hey, same. You I've, know? I've had multiple conversations. Like, it's hard. Like, I get asked occasionally or if I do like the questionnaire, like the things on Instagram stories or whatever. Yeah. About like, you know, owning your own business or whatever. And like, I tell people it's terrible. And not because it's, <laughs> not because I, I like, it's just terrible in general, but like, because you can't think that owning your own business is going to be some glory. I don't want people going into it thinking it's going to be some glorious right. thing right off the bat and stuff like that. It is terrible. Like, it is super tough. Like, there is... It is not for the weak of heart whatsoever. But yeah. at the same time, it's very rewarding. It's very, I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to work for anyone else. Exactly. I don't want to do anything else. This is what I want to do. Like me and my wife run this together. We are our own bosses. This is what we do. If we don't want to work today. We don't have to work today. We want to work for the next two months straight. We can work. We could do, this is our business. You and I this, both know that the long nights, you know, long after people have punched out at five or 6 yeah. p.m., on a Friday and have the weekend of themselves. We're still, it never stops. And we're not the only ones, but people who are sole like, proprietors, you just got to keep going. Yeah. And then like, we have to work with to get the stuff done. Cause it's us. Yeah. And at the same time we have to be like, you know, we're out place and they're like, look at our phone. Like, Oh, did an order come in? Like, did an order come in? Like, I need to like, yeah. to make sure you have, you have to make sure you have income coming it's, in. Cause man. it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot, but with, so with Nick, um, there were times like, like I said, it's, this is, te- this is hard. And him, like me, we're both one man shows. Right. Um, at least I have my wife to help me on the, on the business side of the business. And it's huge. Um, and this is much larger in scale compared to what he does. Right. But he's the amount of volume that him as one person puts out is incredible. It's like incredible. Crazy. Yeah. But like there's, there's multiple times we have talked about how terrible, like how close we have been to like stopping, like not yeah. wanting to like, because it's, you can only do so much. You can only keep up. And really what a lot of times what prompts it is, you know, not to like talk negatively about customers, but you'll get that one customer that just like drains you, out. you, burns like, you out. And it's, yeah. and it's unfortunate because you'll get that one customer that like does that. And then it also blocks you from like remembering all the awesome customers that yeah. you have. And it's, I get that not all the time, but enough times to remember it. And like you get that one that's just like, great just takes all the wind out of your sails and you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Or you have that one job that just goes horribly wrong. And you're like, I just need to get through it. And then, but then you get through it and you're like, all right, I'm going to keep doing this. And like, I'm so proud of like Nick for like sticking Sticking through through because like, you know, what he does is awesome and he enjoys it. And, no one else really all like not a lot of people offer what he offers. There are people that polish or people that powder coat. There are all these other companies, but like yep. the extent that he does and the quality that he offers, like I deal with him on a business as business side as well. Yeah. And the people that I deal with in business are the ones that I can give stuff to and just not worry about. I don't care what the cost is. They don't, I don't care. Yeah. I just want to be able to give you this and you're going to take care of it. And I don't have to stress about it. I don't exactly. have to worry about like, Oh, are you going to, are you going to make sure you get the spot over here? No, no. I just, yeah. people like when I, the companies I deal with, I want to be able to just give you something and not worry about it. And Nick is that guy. You give him your parts. You don't have to worry. You yeah. don't know. That's it. Done. You give it and done. that should be a perfect plug. If you're listening to this, it's NBP underscore polishing, right? I on believe Instagram? so. I'm going to look at my phone. Yeah. Our good friend, Nick Pontario. If you need anything polished, send it to him. Oh. Uh, yeah. NBP underscore, underscore Nick. Oh, underscore Nick. Yes. That's right. Okay. Not polishing. Yes. NBP underscore Nick. Yep. Shout out to Nick. Yeah. Hard yeah. worker. 
old, I mean, I've known Nick. We talked about it on one of our recent YouTube episodes because after First Class Fitment, we rode the Edison New Jersey Skate Park together and we had yes. ridden bikes together in 10 or 12 years or something like that. So we'd kind of talked a little bit about that on the YouTube episode. It's funny too, because like with the BMXing and stuff like that, he hurt his, he broke his wrist like a, like a year or so Not too ago. long ago. Yeah. yeah, he broke his wrist. Yep. And he's like, he's like, I'm, I'm getting rid of this bike. He's like, I'm done with this. Because <laughs> no I can't, chance. I can't not work, blah, blah. <laughs> exactly. He goes, if I get, he goes, if I get rid of this bike, right, it's going to cost me what would be too much money to build a new bike for me to want to get back into it. Right. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, I agree with kind of what you're saying about not wanting to get hurt. But at the same time, man, like you need an outlet like that. And then, you know, fast forward a couple months and go on Instagram. He's back like, riding. There you are. Like yeah. you're riding again. Like, Dude, cool. And just, like, and just riding that skate park with Nick. And it's a small little skate park, but just riding that doesn't park. Matter. It, it's fun. It rewound 10 years. I was like, man, we're just, Corey was there too, but it was like, I was like, man, we're just kids riding bikes in a skate park again. Like that's all that's that's all that mattered back then. But it's cool that, that we was both, literally all that mattered. Like we, skateboarding we, was everything. Yeah, we both miss we both miss those days because the responsibility was just we're gonna get up. We get. I mean, I made enough money off of my sponsors to like pay my bills. So everything else was like, I'll figure it all out. I don't need a job. Right. I worked part time at a bike shop in my hometown when I needed money. But I had a travel budget and I had a salary. So my salary paid my bills, and if I wanted to travel somewhere. It was cheaper for me to be on the road, right? I'd spend my winters in like Southern California or Florida. I'd go somewhere warm. And as long as I was, as long as I was on the road and I was spending my days at skate parks or riding street with a bunch of locals and I had stickers on my bike and I was handing stickers out to all the kids and I was promoting the companies I rode for, I could ride off all my food, all my travel, all that stuff. So I was getting paid to basically live in a warm climate through the winters. But if I was home and I wasn't, visiting around all yeah. these different areas and being with all these kids and promoting my companies and all that sort of stuff. Like I had to pay for my groceries. I had to right. pay for my fuel. So I was like, well, uh, duh, let's just go. So I had, yeah, no yeah. money ever, but I was on this like dream boat of a ride basically. And so Nick and I talk about that a lot. We're like, that, that was a dream come true. But as 30 year olds now, it's, it's such a good feeling to have like I mean, I know you and I were already talking about like the stresses, the financial stresses of like yeah. a business, but it's so nice to sit back and be like, oh, like, like look what you've got. Like, like we've yeah. got, we can create our money now. You know what I mean? Exactly. In a way. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah, there's way more responsibility now. I mean, I'm not a parent. Nick's not a parent. Uh, Nick's got a significant other, obviously. Correct. Uh, but like, so we don't have like the child aspect of it, but yeah. it's, it's like, yeah, there's more responsibility now, but it's such a good feeling to be like, I'm going to do this for myself and make a living doing it for now, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's great to see that you've also fallen into from basically the Fast and the Furious. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> started a business. Well, this is, see, this is what's crazy about starting the business too, is that I had friends in high school, out of high school, they were into cars. That's my group of friends I was with and stuff like that. They were like, oh, we're going to open like a body shop one day. We're going to do this. I never had any of those conversations. Even when I was in the cars, I never had any of those conversations. Right. Like, oh, I'm going to own a shop. I'm going to build air ride stuff. I'm going to, I never, I never had that. And then I never had any of those conversations. I one one, there was one small period. Me and my brother entertained, like making ex custom exhaust systems for people, like MIG welding exhaust systems in a driveway. <laughs> it's crazy yeah. like to think like well what, yeah that, looking then, back. back then but like yeah. um but then you know i worked on my driveway me and my wife lived in freeport we worked i worked there did side work worked for my family during the day uh doing plumbing and then and then i'd work on cars and stuff like that and then um it was you know it was you joke occasionally oh you know it'd be cool if we had a shop we had a shop we had a shop we had space at a shop blah blah and then one day the conversation with my wife and she's like, okay, well, let's, let's own a business. Like let's I want to own it. a business. And I was like, okay, like that. And also in doing that would also, this is on Long Island. My wife's not from Long Island. She does not like Long Island. So she wanted to move yeah. off Long Island. Yeah. And uh, that owning a business, owning, making hard lines by swoops, which is now swoops built. Yep. Um, making that a business would allow us to eventually leave Long Island being that the majority of the business I have car people transport cars to me. Like, yeah, I moved off Long Island. I lost some of my business from Long Island, but I gained business up here and I still have the bulk of my project cars. Like people still transport cars to me. I still have online orders. I still, it's still, yep. there's, there's fortunately there's been no, um, 
there's been no drop in in uh, work in your income, um, yeah, or in your business. In yeah. the business, there's been no drop in work. Like yeah, I've been playing catch up for a long for a while yeah, now with naturally. everything. Yeah, naturally. Um, yeah. But like, there's been no no real drop. I've had some new customers already, like from the area, which is like yep. really cool. And well, then, what do you think? What do you think is now as far as your shipping stuff, the stuff that you ship out? What do you think is the most common part? that you have designed that you make that you know because i know you do like like reservoirs and catch cans Re and stuff um break reservoirs and hit mf intakes would be the the two top items that if you put the last like five years together those yep. have been the ones that have sold the, the most sellers yeah uh but a, but up until recently i i end up building and shipping lots of one-off parts as well like cool. exhaust manifold different reservoirs like people are like oh i like this shape can you do something like this or for this application or whatever and then different catch cans valve covers modify this a lot of stuff but i, I but unfortunately i've had to do away with a lot of that a because of it has it's a lot of time and it has pulled me away from focusing on the big projects that i have here that are that need my time i need to, I, I can't right. be i can't unfortunately as much as i enjoy it and as much as i want to build everything for everyone I can't spend three hours machining this little fitting when I need to really spend those for one, you know, one little fitting. That's, yeah. that's the time to, that it's not, it's a business. Like it, what it comes to, unfortunately, what it comes to, you know, this is a business. It needs to make money. If yep. it, if it doesn't make money, I can't stay in business and therefore I can't provide products to people. I can't provide a service to people. I can't do anything. So it's a business. I have to do what is best for the business. I have to do things that make money and right. not saying not saying make money in the sense that i compromise any of my quality or any of my like morals or or whatever i have for the business but like not doing certain things that are not profitable like right, right. i love machining little custom fittings but spending three hours on something and only making 75 dollars on it yeah is yeah. not it's not yeah. enough to keep the lights on whereas like yeah. i have to focus and also then that just spent three hours on this little part that took three hours away from a bigger project that you, you know talking projects where i have 50 days into them not full days but you know like yeah i have sheets of you know oh day 52 six hours day 50 you know 53 two hours day 54 10 hours like i have i'm in the 50s 70s 80s on some of these builds i can't be yeah. spending three hours doing yeah. that so like and, and i mean and and it's if, if at any fault it's because you you enjoy those small that's what it is too. i yeah. love i i, I <laughs> yeah. want to build everything all the time right and like if you give me a chat like oh can you make this a I love fittings. Like fittings are like one of my favorite things to like. I've always. It's been so cool that that trans that that came over from your days of like plumber. working as a plumber. Yeah, yeah. And I've I mean, always... and, and I didn't know that. So that's something I've just learned too. Because, you know, I, when I first met you in 2013, it was hard lines by swoops, and Correct. you made the thing for the bag rider shop. Correct. And, seen, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I I like the. I like the aesthetic of s s symmetry and yes. like, and I like that. But I didn't come from like an actual plumbing background, so it's actually really cool that, well, duh. If you were like were a plumber, like but it's you'd funny like this stuff too. It's funny because like not a lot of like where I was in plumbing, like we did residential and you know plumbing, new construction, serve and stuff like that. Aside from like the most common thing, common piece of tubing you bent was a supply line to a toilet from the valve to the toilet or underneath the sink. And a lot of times you had a spring bender, you put on a tube and like you just bent it and that was it. But yeah. I always like try to make it nice. And then like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then I, can I got like what a, your hard lines looked like at someone's house. <laughs> it's funny you say that because it did get kind of crazy. It did get kind of crazy because fortunately my family's business, we did, we did lots of serve, still do lots of service for just regular homeowners, regular stuff. Uh, but one of the towns we worked in was a little more high end. So a lot of the new construction jobs were a little more budgets were a little bit bigger. Yeah. So like we would do, but you're doing whole houses. So you do home runs of your water and your heat lines through this entire house. All right, cool. So I'm in the boiler room. I'm going to work. And I, I got my tubing benders and I would do these nice manifolds <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. bend tubing and like people would come in and it was not, it, it was like tube bending was at one point more common, or at least from what I saw was more common on Long Island in the plumbing industry. And then it went away. Like no one really did it because time consuming. And I started doing it. So like people at the plumbing supply, people like contracts are like, that's crazy. Like that's awesome. And I just love doing it. And like it made, I just, at the end of the day, I want to go to those jobs. I want to do those yeah. things. I want to yeah. do this stuff. And then it, this is how I got, I got, I like bending tubing. And like, I remember like, uh, um, <laughs> uh, three quarter inch copper is seven eighths OD. And I'm like, oh, I'd be, I would love to have a bender for that, but it's so expensive. And my dad one day is like, I think we have one in the garage. I one of the guys that used to work for us stole it from somebody. Like, oh man! I think you go look under the cabinet there. I'm like, all right, and I like open. I'm like, oh my god! It's 
right there. I'm like, oh, I get excited about the dumbest shit. And yeah, I was like but, so excited about this. opened up all the doors. It's, for... it's just, but I had that for like the bigger tubing. So like, yes. cause three quarter and half inch are super common. I have half inch for like stuff in here, which is five eighths copper, five yep. eighths OD copper, half inch ID. So like I had that stuff, but like it was a different aesthetic and like customers like that. And then I, I brought, I like, that's what got me into, that's what interested me about air ride in the first place. That's not really that cool. your car could be slammed because I was all about like that static life. Like, no, no, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you don't have static, <laughs> you're cheating. Like that's, <laughs> you're cheating, man. But if you're going to have air, I'll make you some really cool But like my lines. brother, like, but air ride always interested me because I'm like, it's plumbing. You're assembling yes. brass valves. You need these fittings. You need to make it this way. And like, you want to use the least amount of fittings possible. You don't want leaks. And then, oh, I can bend tubing. I can do this to plumbing setups. Yeah. And then I got into that. And then with the Shea Bays do brake lines. And then, uh, I had seen somebody, I can't remember his name for the life of me. He was building a Mark IV Jetta, like, you know, 2009, 8-ish. Yep. Yep. It was a black Mark IV Jetta. The hood opened, like, forward. Mm -hmm. um, can't remember his name for the life of me. Um, but he had some hardline work. He done. had done some hardline work in, a, in the engine bay, and that's when it, like, clicked. I'm like, oh, my God, I can bring hardlines Fuel to the lines, bay as yeah. well. I could do oh, stuff here. Sure. I'm not just limited to my air ride setups. Yep. And that just, like... That was like the floodgates like everything opened after that and i do you know like my brown car on my brown car i have two small sections of fuel line from the fuel tank to the fuel filter that is the oem nylon line the feed and return right there yeah every other line on that entire vehicle has been converted to an and is either braided or stainless tubing every with the yep. exception of those two <laughs> and then you can be sure that when i get the car back and i start working on it again that's going to go <laughs> and it's going to be everything, everything, everything like, yeah. But that like AN conversion was always like a big thing. I want to convert everything to AN for two reasons. One, I think it looks cool. I like right. the efficiency factor of it. And then to go on the efficiency factor, which is the second thing is that you can, those fittings are more readily available than OEM Volkswagen connection. So if you're on locate your distance away, you just said you were at summit. Right, you were at Summit Racing. Yep. Summit Racing sells AN fittings. You were probably closer to that than you would be to a Volkswagen dealership that might have the part that you needed for the car that just broke down. Exactly. So like, and there's race shops. Like you can look yep. like a most maybe maybe a local motorcycle shop will have some fittings. So like there's, it just makes things more efficient. It yep. makes yep. you know, and it's funny now because I trailer everything and I drive a truck. So it's like, yeah. But at the same yeah. time, I drive a Dodge Ram. <laughs> And almost everything for that truck, I could buy at an auto store. So I'm still kind of yes. in that. Yeah. There's um, something to be said for that, for sure. Yeah. Like I wouldn't tow with a Volkswagen because you're just going to get stuck twice. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Like, yeah, we I'm know not, plenty of people that do. Yeah. Buy that and like, you know, I've gotten stuck. Glove. I've gotten stuck plenty of times. And like I broke down the brown car multiple times. Like I had a problem yeah. where like the water pump broke. And uh, well, everything's everything's going to have a fail point. Yeah. You know, whether or not it's from life or from a failure itself. Like shit, I, tra I trailed my brown car to so 2013 and blew the motor and so well yeah fortunately so i just trailed it back home on a borrowed trailer and a borrowed truck because it's what i had when i drove down and me and my wife went down with our two dogs and right i test drove the car like 20 miles before i like went down i had this might have been when i made it all-wheel drive or something some either yep. way i'd put it no this was before i had done something i turned the car on and had it in my driveway i hadn't realized until it was too late, there was no oil pressure. Oh. But not like I ran the car for like a minute or so, and I'm like, it sounds wrong. Like something's off. And I turned it off, and I'm like, thinking, I'm like, oh, my brother, my brother, like, there's no oil pressure. Great. So we took everything apart, put it back together. It all worked. Cool. Got put on the trailer, drove to Georgia, so driving around, and I'm like, let me let me put it this way. I didn't know what rod knock was prior to this incident <laughs> because yeah. it sounds so similar to a failing O2M axle. Yeah. Because they click, but it vibrates to the transmission. So I'm like, oh, my axle is going to take, take a shit. Like, great. I have some other ones, but I'll just put on the trailer, blah, blah, blah. Driving it. Oh, no. And driving it. I'm like, go leave. <laughs> and like, I go over speed bump. I go over the speed bump and come down. And the little jolt of it coming down, boom, locked it up. That was it. Ugh. And then I had a couple friends meet me and I had my brother. It was my, the amount of, uh, I don't know, events or gatherings that my brother's been at that I have pulled him away from it's been incredible yeah, for yeah. my car breaking it's just been <laughs> incredible like hey where are you just come help yeah. me. But a couple friends we went truck trailer moved across street and just straight up rolled the brown car just like boom onto the trailer and then i left it and enjoyed the rest of the weekend and yep. then came home and then took it apart and saw i like spun rod bearings and a rod bearing i was like yeah i should have seen this coming and then i, I rebuilt rebuilt the bottom end the head was rebuilt a few years prior 
that might have been after the rebuild might have been when I put the oil wheel drive in it. I think that was finally like the push to put the oil wheel drive in it. Yeah. And I think during this, I had Dave Pastor touch up part of my engine bay because I damaged part. I, I think it, no, not touch my engine bay. Do something with the fenders. Do something to the widen the fenders because the front fenders on the car are wide. I had to widen it while I had the motor being built. Yeah, being rebuilt. So then, because not it's not a built motor, it's just rebuilt. And then I got back, reassembled, put the oil wheel drive in, and then I drove it like that for a little bit. Uh, and then, then then eventually, 2013, put the rest of the interior in it the night before the PVW feature, and then we shot it in Sleepy Hollow and Mayo Pack cool. area yep. over there. And uh, and then I drove it like a handful, a couple more times, and uh, that following year, I drove it a couple more times, and that was, that was the end of it. And that was the end of it, yeah. up until now. Well, the, uh, basically what we've covered is covered a lot of uh, questions that some people sent in. I saved some of the questions that we put out on Instagram. Okay. And it's probably easy to say that your brown car is your favorite car that yeah, I'm you like, owned. Yeah, yeah, it's my, that's my, like. That's the one. I've You and I talked about before we went live about the, like, you know, how. Forever cars. Right. And not that you were thinking about actually selling it, but it had cost your mind because you've been offered some money. And you're like, oh. I've no. entertained it, but my wife won't let it go. And ultimately, I don't. Good for her. But the thing is, if I was to sell the car, it's the valve cover is not going with it. The wheels aren't going with it. <laughs> yeah. Like, then you really the, want the car. There's things that are not going with it because it's, but also I don't want, like, it's my car, man. It's yeah, my car. It is. I feel the same way about a couple of the so, cars I have. Yeah. yeah. So. It just it wouldn't be right no. to go to someone else. No, it's my car. But I did want to make sure, because a couple of people asked some pretty cool questions. I want to make sure we covered a few of sure. them. Sure. Uh, but my friend Mike Cashman, uh, Cashman 0012 actually asked. Now Mike He's actually, the one that drove with you in the century. On the century, cross country. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he asked that, where do you see yourself in the Euro scene in five years or possibly even 10? Celebrating the five-year anniversary of him asking me that question. <laughs> yeah. Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. That was like favorite thing ever. Um, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Mitch Hedberg. That because was, yeah. we could do a whole separate podcast about Mitch Hedberg. I love we Mitch Hedberg. Totally He's I'm one of my favorites. so unfortunate that he passed. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I think he had it. He was on a path that was leading so, up to that. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. talking about like the the UPS man being the best drug dealer because he's always on time. The like, FedEx driver. The FedEx driver. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, man, that was. He's a drug dealer. And he doesn't yeah, even know. Yeah, it. exactly. It's like, <laughs> all right, that's kind of information. I know you're joking, but there's some seriousness to that. And oh, yeah, and it, it ended not yeah. well. But yeah, so his question was, where I see myself in five years on the Euro scene. Well, yeah, well, whether or not, I mean, I, I'm taking the liberty to expand on that, but like, I guess where you think you see swoops built or or where you're at yeah inside of the community that you're currently working in so eventually i would like to have an event cool. like i want to bring i want to help bring some of the community back to the Volks, volkswagen scene specifically yep uh i like cars in general but the volkswagen scene's always been a community like that's what drew me to it aside from the fast and the furious that's what drew me <laughs> yeah. to it in the first place was the community that's the in camaraderie. the camaraderie you know, just everything just you have the camaraderie then you have people help every, everything yes. but when we like when me and you and like when we started going to shows when we started getting cars those are events that like people could bring their kids to and in the last few years things right, have been overrun right. you know, oh, i have a son now he you know he's older i want to start bringing him to events but there's nothing i can really bring him yeah. to there's nothing like like my wife never got to experience like a, a real like h2o like a good she never had to experience anything like that you know, now it, it's just full and it was always insanity. a blast because you go to h2o people cruise the strip. You get to see your friends from all up the coast and like you hang out, you go here to eat, you do this. And it was always just a blast. Yeah. She didn't get to experience any of that. And I want, I want that to happen again. So I know this isn't like a business, but this is part of the business is that I want to eventually put an event on uh, something similar along the guidelines that Alpine Vag Fair or Volk Fair is where yep. it's like Volkswagen and Audi only. You have like the tags for the cars and, you know, to, Unfortunately, this is what needs to be done to, yeah. to, to get things back on track. Eventually, it won't need to be that way. But yeah. for right now, it needs to be that way. And like first class fitment, it's unfortunate the first class fitment ended, but I totally understand like ending on a good note, like high note, boom, exactly. 10 years, we did well. Yeah. But the invite only, private lot, uh, they, hired, you know, they hired the state troopers to be there. I went, I went to eight of the 10 first class fitments. There was yeah, same actually. There was same. never, the last year was the one that, Oh, had a little scuffle with the one the one kid trying to get it. Yeah. Aside from, yeah. But aside from that, those events are those events I brought my son to. Those are the events I look. That was my favorite show. Yeah, me my too. My favorite show because it was you'd go, you'd see nice cars, you'd hang out with your friends. There's food there. There's music. There's the. It's just nice. You knew it was going to be a calm day right. where you can enjoy 
the event. Enjoy looking at cars. Enjoy talking to your friends. Like, shit, I think that's the, in the last few years, that's the only time I've conversed with you in real life. Like, not through the phone. I think it's the only time I've had the opportunity. Yeah. I've also haven't been to shows. So that's the only time I ever got to yeah. see you. And those are one of those things like, oh, cool. I'm going to first class swimming. I get to see John. I get to see Dave. I get to see, you know, Dave Tormey. I get to see yep. these people. Yep. I, you know, I get to see these people. And that's I wanna- the only reason why I still do it, to, to be honest. I mean, I enjoy seeing the cars and stuff, and I, I do it myself too, but it's seeing you guys, seeing it, friends and. H2O, for years, the last few years of me going to H2O, and like, so say 2000. 10 to like 2013 or 14 or whatever it was yep. just i want to see my friends so right. i just want to see friends like yeah i can show my car off, see other people showing their cars off it's cool i enjoy looking at cars but ultimately i want to go hang out with my friends and our cars and like we get to do yes. stuff and hang out and just they're my friends you know so but i want to put an event i want to put an event on cool um i spoke with nick about this before about a couple of us coming together to put events on because you need funding for it you need permits yeah you need, you need yep. space i've been i and, mean paul barney's a good friend of mine and Man, the stuff that they're going through to even even ha- hold an event in yeah, Helen right now. So uh, even in a town that isn't battle scarred from yeah. car shows, yeah, there's a lot involved. There's a lot. There's and a then ton like, involved. So like, I, would, I, und- it'd be great to start small, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, like, I have not to like be. I, I have a pretty large. Fo- I have a pretty large following. Yes. It's not going to be a small event. No. Like it's. I'm a, like, I want to do an open house here and it's going to be pretty large. You know, yeah. It's cool. But at the same time that I can't start small and like kind of right. work yeah, into yeah. it where we can set things up. It's, we have to get so many things covered all at once to make sure that, you know, we don't either get fined or, or there's an incident or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, and then aside from that, from a business standpoint, um, want to bring more of the opera. I build everything in house for the most part. I sub out some operations, very minimal. I want to start bringing some other machines in-house and pretty much like everything will be almost everything will be produced a lot of stuff is produced in-house right now i right, only sub out a little everything. bit but like i don't have a plasma table i don't have like yeah. a, a, a or anything i don't have anything cnc everything's manual machines i do everything yeah, yeah. manual so all the yeah. stuff you see yeah i either cut it by hand or you know cut it by bandsaw like by eye draw everything out right. all that stuff so like i want to i want to bring some more uh more equipment in here let it so that i can have machines doing some of my work while i do other work and just just basically the what you see me do today is I just want to just have that improved upon and more streamlined for for years down the line and just just have it just same but it'll be, always be the same thing always offering you one off right. pieces you cannot like this is it like this is, this is your car everything on this is custom like this is your one off vehicle nothing on this is going to be reproduced or at least not entirely you know and like that's just keep the where I'm going keep on that trend and I eventually want to have an event to bring community back to the Volkswagen. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't have any doubts that that wouldn't, that that wouldn't be a really good, really good thing, even in its inaugural stage, you know, like a first you. show. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that'd be amazing. And that's awesome that that's something that you planned on because that's what I was hoping. I was hoping that would be a good question to expand on that. And, and, and it, in, in most of these episodes, I don't go through all the I questions because we cover a lot of it. Yeah. Corey and I learned the hard got way. the hang of it. Yeah. Corey and I learned in the, in the first couple <laughs> to just ask the questions first. Yeah. Because by the time I get to the questions, I'm reading them all like as we're recording. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we've just spent the last hour and a half talking about this. So. But uh, like that real quick, like that, you're new to this podcasting and YouTube, right? Oh, so for you, sure. So you're going through all this. Those, those mistakes and those learning experiences doing those for an event same same thing but on a much larger scale because you're right. dealing with other humans at least with this it's just you two you have more control of it these events it's 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 and this is why more people don't put on events because right. of how much is involved with it yep. and uh i but, thought i always wanted to put on a show and then i just got to know more of my friends that do and i was like yeah well, that's 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 dude, a lot of work <laughs> dude for, not even that for the longest time like oh um uh i wanted a booth like have my own booth at events right yeah and then i figured out no it's way easier to provide a car for someone, someone else's, else's booth. booth. Dude. Oh, I mean, you, and you I'm car in the middle for your of that. booth? Here you go. And, oh, yep. you foot the bill? Sounds good, man. Yeah. Because also, I'm, a lot of time I don't make it to events. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you're in a different position, too. But, like, for me, you know, I, I left my rig down in Chattanooga and Corey and I rented a van and I yeah. took the whole Governor's Club booth set up all the way down to Chattanooga. And, and yeah, just to have this whole, like, virus yeah. thing, but who, like, you know, cancel everything. We didn't know that. You obviously. can't know that. But, like, yeah, I'm in the same boat with like the vending stuff. I'm like, yeah. well, uh, I'm on that bridge of like, maybe I will. But that's kind of where Night Laser comes in where I'm like, well, you already have a booth. You've got a company. I'll just make you merchandise. Which, and you do it. Which you is know? funny because you made us the key rings for 
uh, Mark Four meet last year, which you didn't have a chance to get. I to. didn't go to, but oh, I had, but the Kings made it. I had okay. Awesome. I had Mike Hauk and my friend Aaron Chair. They both okay. Mark Four kids. They I gave them everything. They offered to help Perfect. me out because awesome. my dog was sick, so we didn't right. get yeah, down I remember there. That. Yeah. So, but they took care of everything. They they handled the meat for us. They took care of everything, and we got the keychains. I I don't. Did you keep one? I kept one. Okay, and that's good. all that was extra. Good. Everything else either was given out or went, you know, I, I shipped some after it was done. I shipped some to my, some Mark four people and friends and stuff that right, didn't make right, it. Right. But like, but yeah, they, they, I was very fortunate that my, that Aaron and Mike stepped up and took over the, That's took cool. care of the event for yeah. us. Yeah. And, uh, those were a cool key ring. Yeah. They were an acrylic, like a black acrylic. Yeah. I liked them. I just like drew it and I sent it to you. And then I was like, Oh wait, you need to follow this way. And I hit up my, my friend Vinny. I'm like, yo man, change it for me. Thanks. Yeah, Cause I don't do that out. stuff. Like, I do everything. Yeah. Like that, what I sent you was legit. It worked out. A hand drawing. Like I yeah. just guessed that whole thing by hand with a light box. Like I'm super like old school in that. Like you want your little so notepad cool. where you write stuff down. Yep. I do, I draw, like I draw, draw all the. Oh, the, the only reason why I don't have that notepad with me right now is because we literally decided to do this podcast last night yeah, we while did. we were on the road. So I'm like, like, I literally don't even have the time to write this down. But this right here is oh, just straight up. yes. Just straight up drawing. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Like for, for those just, of, for the, everyone listening on Spotify or iTunes. He's got a notebook with just all of these like schematics and designs of like parts that he custom builds. Basically hand drawn, like CAD drawing in a sense. Like everything's yep. drawn by hand. There's all these dimensions are taken with a micrometer, uh, the caliper and micrometer and I manually machine. That's a, that's a true machinist. Right. You know I, like, I, mean? I like manual. And machine. it's in a McMaster car Ziploc bag. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I have to protect it from all the oil. Like from not, you know, oh, yeah. it. I change them out from time to time. But it's just funny that obviously you got. I buy from, dude, they made a delivery this morning. Yep. I'm sure they did. Yeah. Like uh, that's a new truck on that, on that late. I, yep. uh, I, bu- I got that truck with the new milling machine. I have two of them. So I got used that one, but I needed the, the, um, the Morse taper to attach it. So that arrived this morning. I was able to install it. Oh, cool. Be they here like every day. Uh, I know you have. Yeah. Well, I asked you how late you were going to be here last night. You're like, oh, Forever. until the work's done. You were texting me. When you texted me what the address was, was like I was driving home. Yeah. I was yeah. driving home. It was almost midnight. Yeah. I didn't go to sleep till like two-ish, three-ish. So. And you know, since we're about the same age, you probably know as well as I do that uh, getting good sleep is incredibly key now. Like I can't. Maybe maybe you're exceptional. Like Yes and no. Like if, it, it if, is, but I, I try to like try to do like the conditioning thing, like trying to condition myself to like not have so much sleep. Yeah. Like, yeah. If I, if I, if I'm only getting like four hours a night, I, I oh, only, I can only do that a couple of days until I'm like, I could do down. that for, for a little bit, but then eventually I'll get knocked, I'll eventually get knocked on my ass, but you know, like you gotta make yeah. sure you eat and you know, everything oh, properly. Sure. There. But like yeah, yeah. during the move, I was burnt right out, burnt out to the point where one day, the whole day, for the day I was awake for a total of four hours. I was asleep in bed the whole, I got knocked on my ass so hard just from yeah. being, pushing myself out, being, it being cold, getting sick, not eating well because I used to eat in my shop, but it didn't matter. I had a microwave, uh, toast, toast oven. I would go to the supermarket, I'd buy stuff and like I'd make food, but I'm moving. Nothing's here. Right. I don't have any, I, I, oh, I go buy Chipotle. We're going to eat Chipotle every day. No, I'm not going to eat Chipotle every day. It's not as awesome as you think to eat it every yeah, day. I know, I know. I love it. But I'm not eating it every <laughs> day. Me too. <laughs> and it was just, it, I, but normally I try to like, you know, I, I try to condition myself to not sleep so much, but for the most part, then like on Sunday, if, but the thing, really what it comes down to is that if I'm not moving, I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah. Same. So if someone's driving a car, I'm out. Done. If sitting on the couch, I'm out. Yep. But if I'm moving, I'll keep you up for 24 hours straight working and then just sleep for an hour and a half and I'll be fine. Like, yep. not that I could do that every day. But like, I'm still capable of doing that because I kind of refuse to like, let go of like how I did things when I was 20. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of the same way in that sense, but, but I've but noticed you, that. But you know, yeah. I noticed it too. I just try not to like let it in, but like, I noticed it. I'm like, yep. Oh my God, I am old. I need to go home. Yeah. Well, the problem is, is like, if I'm coming back from like a long flight or something like that, especially if there's any jet so lag draining. involved, I have to shut off. And then my body's the next couple of nights. It's like, no, 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 no. You need at least six hours of sleep. Can't it's funny though you're saying at least six hours of sleep and that's still not a lot for people it's supposed to be eight you yeah. know and it's like oh six no six is a lot. i got six hours of sleep last yeah. night All right, cool if i got seven i'm like oh my god i slept for a long time that's where we were we, we get to the hotel room in harrisburg uh last night at like midnight and i set my alarm for six i'm like that should be that should be good midnight to six we got yeah six hours that's of fine sleep. we're good although although now what time is it now it's like it's later than we expected it to yeah, be and uh we haven't eaten lunch yet and i can feel i'm like like you said you gotta stay on top of yeah. eating and it's like oh yeah i can tell that it's like gonna be 
one of those days where it's like, no, your body's like, you need food. Yeah. yeah. Or like, or we got to finish this up. We have to pack up and you guys have to, you know, eat something, get back on the road. Like, we can finish this up. Yeah. No, I know, but no, I don't need to finish. I'm saying like, this is what is involved in our exactly. days, which is why the days are so long. Like this is, this is not, oh, cool. We finished this. We'll finish this. And then, all right, we're done for the day. Like, no, no, I'm going to go back to work. What's, You're going to get back to driving. Like there's, we still have lots of stuff. We still have, so it's three o'clock. We still have about eight more hours of the day left to go. We've got like, basically five hours of driving. Like we're still going to be doing stuff for the next eight hours of today. Yep. So we've got about five hours of driving. Corey's got another hour to drive back home to basically get settled in, do laundry, all that, and get back to work tomorrow morning. I'll probably be downstairs in my shop tonight starting on some work. So yeah, I, we we're, we're, Cut from the same cloth, yeah. man. Yeah, for the man. most part, the you most part. you grind way harder than we do. I think. All right. For sure, I, I'd 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 be willing to bet that. Absolutely. I mean, by the look of the projects in here, okay. what are you working most on right now? What? All right. So Mark, most of this Mark Five right here. Okay. So you, there's a there's a metal wide bodied Mark Five. Yeah, in I here. posted a couple stories. Has it been some posts on my Instagram, uh, which is at the swoops. The swoops. And yep. um, I posted. A, there's been some updates on that, but because the projects take me so okay. long, a lot of the, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was on vibrate. Why is that ringing? <laughs> well, you, uh, all right. you had, well, you had it. You had it. You had it at the ready because you're you're waiting on your wife to call you because your dogs. Yeah, we're in just just kind of moment. yeah, just kind of keep an eye on that. But the, yeah. what I was saying was because it takes me so long to finish to, like, to build, do projects that, that they're very involved. I'll like uh, save the photos and then I'll start putting them out when they're close to the car being done, so like people can. It makes more sense to people exactly. instead of being more spread yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But like this is a, a wide body Mark V R32 that has um, Mark VI parts grafted onto it. So it's Mark VI fenders, Mark VI yep. Golf R like front. Uh, the bumpers, top of the rear bumper is Mark V, bottom half is R20. But it's uh, also a fully built motor getting a turbo setup. And that's what I've been working on because it was on a deadline to be driven, like driven, turned on and brought to dust off oh okay and that that deadline worked in the customer's deadline but because of recent events everything's Tom and pushed Blake. off yeah and um every, everything's pushed off but i'm still chucking away at this and then i have um actually this i won't work on anymore today i worked on a little bit this morning today and tomorrow i'll be fulfilling online orders though i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get those shipped out yeah. because of what's going on but at least they'll be completed so as soon as like things are okay i can ship them out yeah but today and tomorrow i'll work on online orders and then I'm probably gonna start on. There's that UR S6 back there, that the five cylinder Audi wagon. Yeah, it's a cool. There's that, wagon. and then um, that one's getting. Uh, I have to modify the exhaust manifold, uh, new charge piping. Uh, we ordered uh, from Germany a, a lower plenum a flange for the intake manifold. Then I'm gonna build the the plenum velocity stack and build the remainder of it. And then I have to do a bunch of plumbing, like fuel plumbing. Yeah. And oh, custom radio. I got the core. I ordered a core. And I'm gonna build the you know the end tanks built from scratch cool. you know the whole thing and that those are like next on the docket of like cars need to work on yeah well man we'll let you get back to work then because I mean you haven't had lunch either no Neither. I had we, the trail mix before we started we've done about two hours so that's yeah that's uh I mean that's that's more than I thought we were gonna get out of today I figured I'm we'd actually sit down surprised for an hour. I, I'm actually surprised we're able to stop it at this point. Me and you always talk for like a oh, long we, time. Oh, trust me, man. If we didn't have any work to do, oh, or, no. we could just talk forever. Because we, then we start talking about music, and then we and everything, we'd get, just music, and just. I don't know, if you pay attention to like what everything we talked about, we didn't really finish too many conversations. They just all rolled in. It's it's awesome because like this is how we. Well, this this this, this, this is awesome. This and this is what I like most about this already is I want to be able to. There's so much I like covering with my friends and. Corey and I basically talk about like just stuff that we've been doing, but the last one we did, we talked a lot about music Yeah, and there's, there's you and I could probably do three or four different podcast episodes and the next would, three be the same. wouldn't even have anything to do with cars. No. You know what I mean? So no. uh, that's what I like most about it. Cause that leaves room for more episodes to, to cram in with my friends yeah. and we're going to have to get it done this, this year if I end up moving to Tennessee. So yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, my wife used to live in Kentucky and she loves it down in that area. So, like, driving oh, yeah. down that way is not, sure. like, a problem. Like, no. as soon as, like I said, I'm getting caught up here and I've just made the move and everything, like, my, my, our, me and my wife, our plan is we want to start, like, attending more events and start, like, traveling places and start doing, like, things we used to enjoy doing that yeah. we haven't been able to yeah. do in the last few years because of the situation we've been in and stuff yeah. like that. So, like, I want to start getting back on that and then, like, you know, I have friends and, you know, like there's other friends down the coast. So it's like, all right, cool. I'll make a trip and go see these people. This people. Like I had to go to a few years ago, I had to go to a wedding in 
Maryland. I'm like, all right, cool. When I drive back, I'm going to stop at Dave Pastor's house. Yep. I saw Dave and Meg, and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to stop at Tech's house and see, and because Tech was in Jersey. In Jersey at the time yep. with uh, with Caitlin. And I'm yep. like, all right, cool. Like, I'm going to, cool. Went to the wedding the next day, we're going to go see our friends. Like, that's what I'm going to make this effort to see people. And like, that's well, what I like, that's try, what to this, try to do. So, that's you know, what this podcast is. Right. We're on our way home awesome. from Tennessee, and it's like, well, let's go out of the way just a little bit. Yeah. And that's like, again, with, to go back to like doing an event to have something where, there's no first class fitment. So where am I going to see you? Yeah. I'm going to see you for these podcasts because yeah. I'm not going to have an event to go to. Seriously. You know, so it's like, so it's like, uh, I want something where, where we can all get together and know that we'll be able to converse and be able to enjoy each other's yeah. company. Yeah. And, and, uh, cause like, like I said before, I used to go to shows to see my, I go to shows to see my friends. And like Same. this past fest, first class fitment was like, it's super important regardless of everything that was going on in my, in my wife's personal life and stuff like that. She's like, we need to go. And you need to see your friends. Like you need to see people. Cause I lived, I basically lived in my shop for yeah. you know, so many, yeah. so many, so long. So you need to see your friends. You need to see these people. You need to talk with them. And like, I saw you, I saw, you know, I saw Nick, I saw, I saw a bunch of other people and then other people that came up to me and I got to, you know, just need to need that social like oh, interaction. My friends sure. that I don't yeah, get yeah, to see yeah. often. I'm, I'm in here so much. Yeah. So yeah. And, then really you, nice. and you value that time even more, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's so uh, far and few between. Yeah. Usually. And that's why I was like, I was pumped about this. Just, this just fun. Like, yeah. This yeah fun. That's, that's like, why. I, yeah. I and like, know. it would have been cool. Not that we could, but it would have been cool to like, from the moment you walked in the door to like catch everything. Cause we talked from the moment you walked <laughs> in the door, like the three of us were like talking nonstop from that moment. Yep. And, uh, like I said, halfway in, I'm like, we should probably yeah. set up the gear because we've already done half a podcast. Just talk. Just yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I like the most about it. And that's it. Cause I've never done this either. I just the, like talking to my friends and that's all I want this to be. Yeah. So well, this, this is super new. Like I just, like I said, I just did their interview with revival and then now this, and it's like, like I was saying before, like this is, this one in particular is less nerve wracking for me because we're conversing. Yeah. I'm distracted. Yeah, just us hanging out. But like people watching that, like this is letting people know about like me and like out to like the public and like stuff I don't usually share with like right. not close friends and stuff like that. And it's just like, this is all new to me. It's, it's, it's interesting. So this is quite the experience It's quite the experience. And it's, it's nice to share it with a friend. Yeah. I'm glad that you were, because there's three of us here. Yeah. So. Yeah. You were, you were like, well, you would sort of like sit next to me or something. We go like, share the microphone or something. What are you going to do? Yeah. Like, I don't want, you know, like, at least you got in for like a second. You know, like I didn't yeah. you know. I don't want to be left yeah. out. Yeah. He sat so. in so I could just be like, so how slow is my dually? I was like, it's pretty slow. <laughs> But no, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, too. I'm excited about this. I'm excited to do more. I'm excited to see more of the stuff that you're cranking out of this shop. I'm excited to listen to more of your podcast. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I probably won't watch them on YouTube, but I certainly listen to them. Well, that one's hard. Yeah, and to be honest, that one was that one was more of an investment too. More gear, way more editing time. Like the yeah. audio stuff's pretty easy. Yeah. I have like an intro and outro, and I, I get my levels right, and it's all one take. I don't edit them down. I don't right. cut and edit. The audio is done and up. To get the YouTube stuff done, it it takes forever to like because all high definition video yeah, and but it's it just, a whole nother I know. level like it's a whole nother like you get yeah. to see these people that are that's, talking it's that's like, why I want to do it there's so many times that like I'm listening to Revival because I was like that's the other like it's pretty much your podcast and Revival the two car related awesome. podcasts I listen to yeah. aside from that it's all true crime podcasts like things I like that just though. like I shouldn't be listening to just because it'll start freaking me out but like I love <laughs> the true crime stuff right and right. Um, me too but. This one and Revival, the only two automotive podcasts I listen to. And there's been plenty of times I listen to Revival and I'm like, man, I would love to see this conversation going down. Yeah. You know, yeah. so like the first few of Purpose and Passion, I watch on YouTube, but I haven't been able to. Time. I just don't have time. Please I sit in my truck. I have 30 minutes in my truck. All right, cool. Hour and a half, right? Yeah. I can do one in one day or if i have some time in the office i'll listen to it then or if i'm in the office maybe i'll throw on i'll match the time up and go to youtube and watch it on youtube in the yeah. office you know like, i'll catch parts of it and stuff it like that and... but it's it's cool that knowing that i can listen say it was to listen to this conversation that are this whole thing to be able to go like, all right i want to see what's actually going on at this time and then go to youtube and be like oh, around the four minute mark the 50 minute yeah, mark yeah, exactly and see, it's nice that there's like a watching TV, another channel. That's another, it. Another, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very, yep. it's very nice. I like, I like, I enjoy it. I that, definitely enjoy it. That's why I wanted to bring it in. I wanted to include that factor because there's plenty of friends, even from Europe that I want to have on the show. And 
and I know a lot of people will probably, you know, be like, wow, I wish I could, like if somebody's speaking with a very sharp German accent and broken English, but like, I kind of want to watch these guys talk yeah. I want to see like what he looks like, what's his style. Like, how's he like? dressed and stuff like yeah, that. It's a different culture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and even right down to, you know, like guys like you well, and I do well, it. You had for your, um, your, tr- tr- your drive across America. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was your friend that flew in the day before you headed down South? Oh, Jules came over from Germany. Right. So like him, like that's a completely different person. And it's right. like, you know, it's just like, yeah, we had him in the, in the, like the YouTube episodes. Yeah. We didn't yeah. So I, cool. Cause I'd watched that and I'm like, and who's this guy? <laughs> and I don't know if this is cool. Like, cause you, you want to, you'd want to see that. You don't yeah, want to, yeah. he- you, you yep. hear it. It's cool, but you'd want to see that. See when he arrived, what do you, you know, you want to see these things just to, it gives you more of a feel, more of a, yeah, the visuals add yeah, that much more you know, to it for sure. It's, it's nice. Yep. Well, hey, man, we'll wrap this yes. one up then. Because yeah, uh, we, have, we have still a long day ahead of both, all I, of us. I know, man. I feel bad I dragged you away from your work. For no, this man. One, I need a break. So, Dude, this, well, thank you so much for doing thank this. You. And uh, one more time, The Swoops, yeah. S-W-O-O-P-S on Instagram. Yeah. And then that has all the links to like our Facebook and our Perfect. website and stuff like that. But that's like the number one. If you want to see anything up to date, you want to see, you want to see what we do, Instagram is the best place. It'll lead you to other places, but other, other forms that we have. But that's like the best, you know, I try to update stories. I try to update the page at least once a week, if not twice. But stories are usually going pretty frequently throughout the week. Perfect. Um, just to, you know, it inter- you know, I like sharing it. So it's nice. Awesome. Well, hey, man, we'll let you get back to it. The Swoops on Instagram. I uh, hope we can do this again soon. Me too. And at the very least, hang out again soon. Oh, yeah. We definitely need to hang out soon. All right, 100%. Man. Hey, thank you guys for listening and watching on YouTube. Uh, again, I am John dot Ludwig on Instagram and you can follow, uh, basically purpose and passion through my own personal Instagram. I don't have an Instagram there, but the governor's club as well. We uh, post a lot of stuff there too. So thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you in the next episode. Yep. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. That did not feel like two hours, dude. I'm like looking at the phone. I'm like, holy fuck. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm end this though, because like, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs>